Hi, it's Dan Hodgins, and I'm here today with my good friend, Mr. Christopher Bright. Hello, Chris. Hey, how are you doing, Dan? I'm great, thanks. So, Chris, uh, let's keep practicing that 10-second bio. So why don't we go through yours, and then I will share mine. Okay, uh, my name is Christopher Bright, and I am a working musician. Um, I love sharing music with people and all the benefits that it can bring to their lives. Um, and I make music also that I hope will benefit people's lives. So I can I can vouch for the music that Chris makes. Mm -hmm. He he is in a band called Glider, and uh, I've got a really uh, there's a song of theirs I really enjoy called what is it Igniter Chris Ignition uh, Ignited Ignited Yeah. Yeah, it's a fantastic tune. I, I described it to Chris as Kings of Leon meets Veruca Salt. So it, it's a really great track, really, really rich guitars, rich distorted guitars. So if that's your kind of thing, you might really like that. So I will do my 10-second bio. So my name is Dan Hodgins, and my passion in life is helping people solve their marketing challenges so that they can eliminate the complexities and frustrations that so many people experience with marketing to bring simplicity and clarity to their thinking, as well as the confidence they need to power through the challenges and achieve success. How's that, Chris? Very good. <laughs> it's true. Okay, so let's get into the topic of, of today's Hangout, Chris, which sure. is strategies and tactics and goals. So the first thing to think about is how do we organize this particular document, because you, you definitely want to create a, a document for this. So the way that I do it, there's a couple ways to do it. You can either start with three sections, one called strategies, one called tactics, and then the goals one would be above that. Okay. What some people do is they will have a section above that called vision. And I find it's a little bit tricky to start with that because when you start at that high a level, it's really tough to keep coming down into the details to the, to the tactics. Okay. So I find that the, easy, the easiest way to start is just, you know, define what your goals would be list your strategies and then list your tactics. So, so three sections, top is goals, and then strategies, and then tactics. Okay. So let me ask you a question, Chris. When we're setting goals here, I think the easiest way to do it is to separate your music teaching business from your app business. Does that make sense? Yes. Great. So there will probably be a, se a whole separate... Um, strategy, tactics, goals, document for that particular line of your business. Okay. Yeah. So let's let's start with goals. So first of all, before we set goals, I kind of need to know where you're at so that we can set some sensible goals. So, and this will depend on what you're comfortable sharing or not sharing in okay. this for, format. So why don't you tell me where you're at in, in whatever way you're comfortable sharing? Um, can you give me a, an example? I'm not sure what you mean of where I'm at. And in, in what, what sense? Okay, okay. Number of students. Okay. Hours of lessons from those students per month and the price you're charging to generate X dollars of revenue. Okay. So just uh, the numbers, basically. Off the top of my head, I'm not exactly sure what the numbers are without looking, but right now I okay. have probably 20 students. Okay. Um, and that's usually $25 for a half hour uh, once a okay. week. Okay, so uh, that's a, like an estimate. Okay, yeah, let's let's run the numbers. So, twenty okay. students, and they take on average, you said, one lesson a week. Yes. Okay, so that's twenty lessons a week. Yeah. Uh, are they thirty or sixty minute lessons typically? Thirty minutes. Okay, so twenty lessons times. Okay, so twenty twenty half hour lessons, Chris, would be ten full hour lessons, correct? Yes. If they were full hour lessons, okay. Yes. So 10, 10 full hours times, and you, you say your rate was 30, 35 an hour? Uh, 20, I'm oh, sorry. At, at, for a half hour, it's 25. Okay, so that would be 50 an hour then, yeah. if we were extrapolating. Okay, yes. great. So, so 500 a week, 2K yeah. a month. Yeah. Great, good. So the first thing to do would be, um, you know, to link the success of your of your advertising and marketing and sales efforts to... You know, how many more students are you going to get per month and how many dollars? So, so we need to come up with some numbers here in the goals section and we need to be very specific and we need to um, make the, these goals that we list out like time-bound. 
Um, so in other words, okay. by December 2014 or by July 2014 or something like that. So yeah. why don't we start with, I think the relevant unit here would be, and I guess it depends on the type of student, Chris, because if, if you're wanting to attract an adult student, um, I, I guess the rates are the same, right, for, for uh, adult students versus uh, yes. a child? Yeah, okay. um, but a lot of times the adult students want to go for an hour. Okay. Uh, and they have the capital for that, so it's not usually an issue. Okay, but, but the, I, I guess the, the, most, the, the simplest uh, unit of, an, of analysis here, I think, would be number of students. Okay. You know, yeah. number of students that have a regular lesson. And, and yeah. let's define regular as once a week. Okay. So you've got uh, 20 students right now. Yeah. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to trying to figure all this math. Okay, so 20 students. 20 students. Uh, we're coming up to, let's just call it March 1st, 2014. Okay. Um, by, let's see, within three months, Chris, so that would be, so March, April, May, so by June 1st, how many students would you like to have? Um, realistically, if I could add five students, I think that would be a good start. Good. Let, let's use that. So 25 students, so, so five more students by June 1st, so that's three months. Yeah. I think that's a great goal, Chris, and um, the acronym that, that, that is commonly used for goal setting is SMART, so specific, okay. you know, your goal should be specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. Okay. So it's, it's sort of a, that's an acronym that's used in a lot of the self-help books and stuff, but I actually find it's quite yeah. helpful because, you know, I, I guess the way to contrast it would be we could be setting vague goals, which is, um, you know, I'd kind of like some more students, but I'm not really sure, and eh, blah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Or saying but I want to double them in two weeks. Or, you know, I mean, yeah, ultimately, just, if I could have 50 students, something like that, that'd be incredible, but I can't yeah. do it all in one giant leap. Well, and the beauty of it is that this is sort of the one-foot pole that you can easily step over instead of the seven-foot high jump that would require a miracle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, so yeah, no, I think that's a really great goal. So okay. What and and what I would suggest here is um, let's just stick with this single goal in your goal section. I don't think there's okay. any need. I don't think there's any need to define any more than one goal. This is a very okay. specific, very attainable goal. Great, good job. So let's move on to the next section, which is uh, strategies. So, um, and, and you and I have talked about this quite a bit, but just to let everybody else know that. You can think of your strategies as sort of the, the longer term, bigger picture um, type of objectives you want to achieve, or um, I guess the ways that you would that you would get there. Um, so, in other words, your your strategies are are, are kind of higher level things. And, and then if we go down to the tactics level, your tactics are the low level implementation um, types of details. So, the tactical level would be Things like, you know, what should I do with YouTube? How many YouTube videos should I make per week? What should the topics of my YouTube videos be? Or, um, or if you're doing Facebook, how should I use Facebook? What, you know, how often should I post? What should the topics be? Those are all tactical level things. And the reason they're tactical is because they're not really long-term, big-picture types of things. What would yeah. be what would be the higher level things that those lower level tactics link to would be things like be the most credible, be the most trusted, be seen as the expert, be seen as the go-to resource, be the most popular, be the most liked. Um, other strategies that I would come up with off the top of my head for you would be, I would call it power of music. And that yeah concept or idea would encapsulate the power that music can bring in people's lives to bring them the success that they want in life, whether it's just in school or, or anywhere else. And I mean, you and I have talked about this a whole bunch, but yeah. I, I just like encapsulating those ideas in a strategy called power of music. Okay. And 
the way this power of music strategy could link with your tactics is, you know, what are the different ways we might discuss the power of music on YouTube? So yeah. what are the 10 video topics that we could use to sort of discuss power of music? So that's the beautiful thing is once you clarify your goals and tactics, you know how they link to each other. Mm -hmm. And it's just the, the, the clarity is, is quite refreshing. Mm. Okay, so, so we listed out a whole bunch there. So, you know, be seen as the most credible, be the expert, be, um, be the most trusted, be the go-to resource. Um, let's let you on this. So, so can you think of any other sort of high-level sort of strategy-level things that, that just that would be your most powerful, your highest level, your most valuable type type of stuff? Um, I like the power of music um, that the, that you're talking about. Um, I think that's a good one, and I think that's something that you can build over time. Um, and then, like you're saying, just the most credible, the most liked, the most trusted. It's just trying to kind of develop my brand and, and show show its value uh, to the customer. Um, yeah. And I think I, I, I really, the customer in mind in the strategies and creating the strategies is uh, important. Here's where it gets doubly powerful. When, when your strategies are linked to the exact prospect pain points, Chris, that's where it gets really powerful. I'll okay. repeat that again. When your strategies are linked to the prospect's exact pain points, it gets doubly powerful. Okay. So an example of that would be, let's take our power of music strategy or concept or idea. How might this strategy, power of music, tap directly into the prospect's pain points? Well, let's use the risk of not playing music or not playing an instrument mm -hmm. in terms of, um, let's use the risk of that as the example here. So how might power of music relate to the risk of not playing an instrument? Um, the discipline um, that comes into it and the, uh, the math skills that we were talking about, and we're looking at how it, if you don't do it, um, it can get in the way of your success as a uh, not only as a musician but as a person. Um, yeah, and, and try to stress that to the parents. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and I, you know we have to be careful about this and, and really use it in a subtle way that's sort of classy and elegant and refined, as opposed to just coming out and being Mr. Salesman and, and saying you got to do this because the risk of you know like we have to be careful and use nuance here and and um, it, it can get to become mark and sales speak very fast so okay. the, the relevant thing is is to understand behind the scenes that that is what's going on in their head and then to bring that to life in your own style Chris like your natural style of conversation your tone you know as opposed to just sort of reading a script and sounding fake you know it's got to be authentic yeah, yeah. So you have to express it in ways for you that are simple, clear, conversational, understandable, and authentic. Okay. So I'll recap that. So what we talked about is how might we take this high-level idea concept that we're calling power of music, how might we link that directly to the prospect's pain points, which would be the risk of not playing an instrument in their life, and then how do you express this idea of risk of not playing an instrument as well as the, the, the joy and passion and pleasure of playing an instrument? How do you express those things in ways that are simple, clear, conversational, understandable, and authentic according to your unique ways of expressing these things? <laughs> yeah, that's a tough one. That's something, I think thinking of myself, I'm slower thinking about those things. I'm slower writing. I'm a very slow writer. Um, that's and something another, I would another have way to spend saying, a lot of time with and kind of thinking about, you know. Another way of saying slow is that you're very deliberate and you're well thought out. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's true, though. I, I worry about the words I use, um, especially in writing. Um, so I find yeah. that writing takes me a long time. Um, and I'm hoping that if I practice writing, 
and ride more, like using your drills, um, you know, with the, with the stopwatch and everything, that I'm hoping that that'll help improve the process for me and make it more natural. Okay. Um, Let's stick on this thread for a sec because I think okay. it's important. So the first question I would have is how many minutes or hours do you spend on the average day playing and practicing guitar? So not including lessons, but just, just yourself. Uh, probably about an hour, give or take, okay. yeah, generally. Okay. Oh, about an hour. Perfect. Perfect. And, 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 and I presume you're very consistent with that. How many minutes per day, and it could be as little as three minutes, Chris, how many minutes per day right now are you sharpening your marketing skills and tool set and knowledge? Not as much as I should. I'm thinking a lot and, more and it might be It might be zero right now. No, but I mean, right now, right now, it's a lot more than that just because you've really sparked a lot of um, questions and thought um, uh, just as we've been going through this stuff together. So lately, I've been spending an awful lot of time uh, thinking about it and taking notes and things. But before that, it was very hit and miss, just like everything else. It was, let's try this, and then, you know, a week goes by, let's do something, and then maybe a couple of days, do something. Um, but, I, but I see the... the the point is just the trying to start somewhere and have some consistency and kind of grow. Yeah, and I think there's two branches to this this thread here. The first branch is just understand, and I think that's what you've been busy doing with taking your notes and really thinking about this stuff and learning it and making sense of it in your own mm -hmm. mind. But and then once you understand it, to to retain that comprehension, you you you, you really have to establish a practice and. One of my mentors, this guy Eben Pagan, he he said, you know, you 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 don't want to just practice. What you want to do is you want to establish a practice. Mm. And I, I I wonder if he bought if, if he borrowed that from yoga studios where they talk about your yoga practice. Yeah. You know, they they say don't just practice yoga, have a yoga practice. Mm. And and I, I think it's a big big addition. Big, big distinction because this idea of having a, a, a practice implies consistency, discipline, and just the joy of the process and the journey, I think. Mm. Because, it, you know, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you've done yoga, Chris, but I've, I, I've, I've done some yoga classes, and it's, it's pretty hard at times. There's, there's poses that you hold, and you sort of wonder if you're going to get through it, and, and somehow you kind of do, and then... At the end of it all, you feel absolutely wonderful. Mm. And uh, I'm not necessarily recommending anybody does yoga. I'm just sort of commenting on my own experience. And I, w what you're really doing there is you're 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 working on your your bodily muscles, but you're also working on your meditation muscles. So on this same thread, I think we need to work on our marketing muscles. Yeah. No, I and, think that's and, true. and 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 they atrophy if you don't use them. Yeah, um, and, and we don't, you know, we, we, we don't need to sort of have, a, you know, become bodybuilders with this stuff. We just need a sort of a lean, efficient marketing physique, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, most definitely. Yeah. So anyway, we can probably exit this specific thread of uh, talking about a practice, but it, but it sounds like you're at the stage now where you're transitioning into this idea. Um, where where understanding is beginning to overlap with establishing your practice. Absolutely. Awesome, man. Okay, so we've we've set your goal, which is to go from 25 students now at March 1st, 2014, to go to 25 students by June 1st. So that would be three months from now, an additional increase of five students, which mm -hmm. would be just over. Just over, uh, well, just under two actually per month. I don't know, 1.8 or whatever. Yeah. You do the math. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that, so that's uh, that is a great goal. Um, she's like what 1.75 uh, something like that. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> so strategies we discussed five or six, which were around the idea of being sort of. No, known, liked, and well, actually, there's a, there's a great sort of um, three three word acronym. They, they they say you want to they want to increase the number of people that know, like, and trust you. Okay. So that that was um, I think that's from the book called Duct Tape Marketing by John Jench, which is a, a great resource. Oh, I've heard of it. People. 
yeah, it, it, he's got a great a great thing going on. Okay. He makes actually a lot of. Um, I mean, this whole idea of writing your ad first, I borrowed that totally from him. You know, he mm. he talks about writing your postcard as your first marketing exercise, and I yeah, I just sort of call that the telephone pole ad because I think telephone pole ad is just a more fun idea. So yeah. Anyway, so increase the number of people who know, like, and trust you. So you can abbreviate that down just to know, like, and trust, and it, it sort of alludes to the same thing. Okay. And, and again, I want to acknowledge the fact that, you know, the idea of, you know, be the expert, be the most credible, be the most trusted, be the most authoritative, be the go-to resource, um, be the most popular, be the most liked. Some of those are kind of corporate speak, marketing speak, and, and, and I want to just acknowledge that that's what it sounds like. But what we're really outlining here is the, the behind-the-scenes thinking that is going to guide... It, the stuff you do in front of the crew. So, True. you know, backstage we know that, that you want to that you're working on these seven strategies, but you may or may not ever mention them explicitly when you're out in the spotlight in front of the curtain. Yeah, yeah. Right, because it's kind of cheesy to say, "Hi, I would like to be the most trusted." You just nobody yeah. ever says that. No. But the way that you become the most trusted is showing up by doing what you say you're going to do, by keeping your promises and by being committed and, and being present in the lessons with your students. Mm. You know, that's how you, you become the most trusted by earning it, you know? Yeah. But, you know, we talked about the power, Chris, before of, you know, you, you had mentioned that a lot of music teachers, they either, they either don't show up on time or if they're in the lesson with you, they kind of flake out and they go to the kitchen to get a coffee and they leave you practicing your stuff and they're just not really present. Yeah, yeah, or they're just, they don't understand what teaching is. They can be amazing players. That's right. But they don't understand teaching. Yeah. Yeah, because it's a, it's a completely different skill set. So I think those are prime opportunities for differentiation for you. Mm. And we had, we had mentioned that before. So, hey... Have you ever heard of a music teacher who not only shows up on time, but shows up on time with a great attitude, is present there with you, you know, during the lesson, is committed to your success, not just during the lesson and not just with learning an instrument, but is really taking a stake in your success in life by mm -hmm. developing the skills that you need to succeed in life, such as discipline, patience, persistence, and having a passion for playing an instrument. Have you ever heard of a music teacher who's developed a, a methodology for playing and practicing that is based on actual credible and verifiable scientific research studies where you, you know, that have developed um, a, a, a very efficient method of playing and practice that gives you more benefit in less time so that you can, you know, I'm just riffing here, Chris, but yeah, yeah. Um, this is how we arrive at marketing to perform. This is how you, you create an ad that actually is going to send you these five students, you know? Okay. Um, yeah. So that's quite a few strategies. And I, I think, you know, the discussions we've been having about, you know, working on the fear or the risk or the pain avoidance type of pitch versus the increased joy, passion, and pleasure pitch, um, I think all of those are kind of encapsulated in that strategy called power of music. Yeah, I think so too. And that's why I like it. It just simplifies the thinking around all that. And then, again, you can link that single strategy to potentially all of your tactics. And your okay. tactics would be um, all of your different tools, platforms, channels, um, you know, t putting up ads on telephone poles. That, that exists at the tactical level as well. So this idea of power of music is going to be linked down to all of these different tactics. Yeah. It, and, and, and it could be linked to your content, to your ads, you know, any type of marketing document, whether small or big, you can sort of use this power of music strategy. Yeah, I think there's yeah. a lot to it. Now, I want to I wanna discuss this other strategy, which would be called, just call it research-based program or something like that. Okay. Or, or a research-based method or system or something. It's just, it's something, it's yeah. a different method of playing and practice that you've developed based on, and again, you, you may personally have no interest in this, but I think 
a lot of parents and adult students and even the kids might might kind of be interested in if you'd be willing to, to, to go into some research studies and find out like what are the most effective and efficient practice regimes mm. according to the science. I think that'd be really interesting. Yeah, and, definitely. And, and and I actually personally as a musician, I actually want to know this. Yeah. So 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 if you actually dig up some data about this stuff, I would be fascinated to hear about this. Yeah, well, yeah, if I uh, find anything interesting, I'll definitely share it with you. Yeah, yeah, and it might take you a while to, to I mean, some of these, uh, you know, academic research studies are going to be pretty pretty terse, but, you know, just go and read the conclusion and look at some of the data and pull out a few nuggets. And uh, Because, again, we were saying before, you know, three minutes a day, three notes a day is all it takes, and if you can link that idea to these these studies that show that you're, you know, you're more likely to, to, to play if, if all you do is think about sitting down for a small amount of time, uh, you're more likely to actually pick up that guitar. And, and when you do that, you're going to end up practicing for 30 minutes. If you practice for 30 minutes, it's linked to these benefits and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, hmm. okay, so that was this strategy that I'm calling research-based. Okay. Research-based method, I guess you could say. Yeah. And again, that's to that's totally optional, but I want to have it up in that in that section we're calling strategy. Yeah, definitely. And no matter what, any kind of examples are good because they're starting places, and I mean, they're just ideas, and you can you can get a lot from them. Um, just like creating a song, I mean, ten times out of ten, the song I hear in my head when I start is not the song I end up with. You know what I mean? It's but you have a starting yeah. place, and then this tweaks, this tweaks, this tweaks, and at the end, it's you have yeah. kind of your own thing out of it. Chris, there's another strategy that came to my mind here. I would call it science of music. Okay. Here's what I mean. How interesting is it that Pandora, the online radio service, is trying to isolate the exact variables in music that make it more pleasurable? Yeah. I would go and listen to a lecture at a college or university on that topic. Okay. That sounds pretty cool. Hmm. And that may not spark sort of your interest, but I think there's a lot of really interesting and fascinating and unique angles around the whole science side of music. Okay. Um, and I suppose that the theory of music would link into that because the theory of music is really a system of symbolic notation that, well, I don't really know how else to define it. I haven't looked up the Wikipedia definition, but you know, the, the music theory as a system is is a fascinatingly beautiful and complex system. And, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm sure uh, I'm sure you know that. So yeah. So there might be some angles within this whole science of music concept or strategy or idea. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and again, you, you have to pick the strategies that you're most interested in and that you yeah. think would be most valuable and relevant for your students. And it could be that science of music isn't that, but it's good to riff on these things because it's better to have ideas and to throw a few away than to have no ideas and to not be valuable and relevant. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, cool. Are there any other high-level, big-picture ideas or thinking or strategies or anything that, that, that come to your mind? Not off the top of my head. I think one question I have um, looking at all this, um, some of these things, if I was to look into them and look into the research, they might take a bit of time. Would that yeah. be a, could I have that as a goal? Could I have as a goal figure out the science side of music and see if it's a fit? In addition to by June 14th, have five, you know, I could do. I think, I, yes, I think this is a really good idea. Here's what I would do. Let's quantify the goal. Okay. So, so let, let's say that you will have read X research papers okay. by y, y date. Okay. So you pick. You pick number of studies and date. Um, I'd say five studies by June. It's going to take you that long, man? What's that? <laughs> so it's going to take you that long? Uh, depend, I mean, with three kids and... Million students. I, it just depends. It's uh, it just depends. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. 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 Tell me these babies. Fair enough. Fair enough. Woo. Okay. Or you know, let's yeah, say well, let's say five studies by, let's say not say June. Let's say two months. Cool. Okay. So that would be um, what May first. Yes. Great. Um, so read five studies by May first, and then like kind of 
uh, just draw, you know, try and draw a conclusion about whether this is a good road to go down. Because it seems like some of these ideas are, um, they're ideas and you're going to have to do some testing to see if they work in the first place. If yeah. they work, then you can work on the implementing, you can work on strategies in terms of, yeah. um, you know, how, how to start implementing them, but. Um, yeah, there's, there's, uh, th th there's a couple of angles with this. So one of them would be that, you know, you do this research, you uncover these insights, and, and you get these, like, spectacular gains in productivity and joy and passion from your students. The other would be that it's a scientific failure and it totally bombs their playing because you yeah, gave them no, the wrong either advice. Way, either way, you know <laughs> at that point, and you either gain or you, yeah. at least you have your question answered. Um, I think the danger, one of the... One of the hardest parts about before I started talking to you was just not knowing if this was a good idea, if this was a good idea, if this was a good idea. I mean, I have all sorts of things in my head, but um, it seems that you have to answer the questions that will not exactly haunt you, but in a way they'll follow you around. And it's better to spend a little time and know that, no, this doesn't work, and, and be able to be clear, scoot it aside, move on. On the next thing, you know. Yeah, what what you don't want in your head is a whole bunch of uncertainty and doubt and worry and anxiety about this stuff because that yeah. is gonna be what keeps you from being a peak performer and frankly reaching your potential. Mm. You need like this this idea of clarity and power and simplicity and momentum in your head so that you can power through all these things that you need to do to. to I mean, you know, we're really crossing a chasm here where you're, you're on one side and, and you've got this idea of success on the other and what's in the black box in the middle? Yeah. And, 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 you know, in order to power yourself through that and through the psychological and emotional aspects of success, you can't have any doubt or uncertainty or any of that stuff. I mean, th there's going to be times where you're going to have some of that, but what you're getting at is you had this, a whole bunch of stuff in your head that, uh, was maybe it's sort of like paralysis by analysis, where you're yeah. you're 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 analyzing. Is this should I be doing that? Should I be doing this? And so instead of the doing, you're analyzing. Yeah. When you don't need to be analyzing. If you if you if you if you analyze in the beginning and you think through and you organize everything properly, then the analysis is done. You put that to bed and hey, now it's go time. Okay. You know. So I I, I think you're absolutely absolutely right on that front for sure. Uh, so. Another question that comes to mind is how often should I be re-examining something like this, right? So I have my, you know, by June, June, uh, have five more students. Um, so then in June, should I then reevaluate that? And then, you know, if I read the studies in May 1st, should I, when, when should I be, how often should I be looking at this? Because I, the way I see it, um, some of these things are going to come and go, and it's more of a, uh, like a document like this is more of like a living document. Um, it yeah. seems like there's going to be it's going to be constantly refined. But how often should I uh, spend time kind of reviewing and um, making updates? Great question, Chris. And my initial thought on that would be every day would be a bit much. I think once a month wouldn't quite be enough. I think the sweet spot would be why not kick off the week by taking a quick look at it? Okay. I think I think that like I think that would make sense. Okay. Or another another way of thinking about it would be any time that you're feeling a bit down about about the whole thing, and and there will be times, you know, that there's emotional peaks and troughs in all this. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's it's completely acknowledged because, you know, nobody goes through a process like this without some emotional peaks and valleys. It's just how it works. Mm. So, you know, um, I mean, I guess the easy answer would be come back as often as you feel you need to, but, uh, you know, to to, to, to add this into your daily action planner, actually, you might wish to create a line in your Excel spreadsheet, your daily action planner, okay. which is called, you know, re-examine the plan or something yeah. like that. Because um, I find that these things are constantly changing the more I know and the more experience I have. And um, yeah. I've seen that in other things that I've done, just learning to uh, negotiate the marketing and, and business side of being um, a musician. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think it's, it's a great question, and I think the way to have it get out of your head and into your systems is, again, to cre literally create a line in your spreadsheet and add it in there such that, you know, when we're thinking about these numbers across the top of that spreadsheet, which are the days of the month, 1 through 30, you know that on day 1, day 7, day 14, day 21, or whatever days you pick, you know that you're kicking off the day by doing that. 
it, yeah, it's sort of an automatic. It's like an automatic to do list. Like you don't even have to think. You just you you get in the zone and you go for it. You know. Yeah, that's what I want. <laughs> I don't yeah. want. I don't want to think. I spend a lot of time thinking it. <laughs> and no, no. I mean, some people I think they have all this stuff in their head and they don't need the supportive systems. But part of the reason why. I'm so happy to help people like you with this is because I am somebody that does need the supportive systems because I can't keep all that stuff in my head. I need it in my head as well. Um, I find I need to take notes constantly on everything, um, even just a to-do yep. list. Um, if I think, oh, I need to do this, if something else catches my attention, it's gone, and I'm, I have a hard time recalling what it was. Um, like yeah. I said, with the kids and with all that stuff, it's, I mean, it's, this stuff yeah. saves my life. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, it just and gives I, me I, a peace of mind to not have that, you know, that, that high school dream of, oh, no, it's the last day of school and, and I didn't study for the test. Yeah. You know, um, it just saves you from all that kind of, oh, crap, what am I doing, you know? And I think that's yeah. hugely important. Yeah. Well, one of, the, one of the reasons I think this format is so valuable, this hangout format where we, we get on and we have this, bat, we have this deep dialogue about all these things is you're able to express some of the things that are in your head and and in so doing it's almost like I don't want to use the word counseling session but you're expressing these things and you're getting it out of there so it's coming out of and and into the universe it's coming out of your head and into your spreadsheets it's coming out of your head and into your plans hmm. well guess what it's now gone from your head and your head is now free for creativity for being the best teacher you can be for coming up with breakthrough ideas and then like replenishing your emotional well and your well of willpower so that you can like absolutely dominate this stuff. Yeah, and that's huge too. And I think just the other benefit of having someone to um, express these ideas to is just that, I mean, I think you said it before, but we spend so much time by ourselves being entrepreneurs in whatever our field is. I mean, I'm at home most of the day. Uh, working on this and that, working on songs, working on lesson plans, all kinds of things, and um, it can be kind of isolating um, sometimes, yep. and it's it's tough to know what other people are thinking because you have a perception of that the grass is greener on the other side, and, oh, I'm sure they all know what they're doing over there, but I'm stuck here, and I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and I'm sure that's not as true as, as I make it out to be myself. Like a lot of people, we all have the same struggles and, um, you know, that kind of thing. I think I think everybody does actually. It just some people verbalize it more than others. And mm. you know, why is there an entire industry of counselors out there? It's because it's very therapeutic to go to a counseling session and to just talk stuff out. Okay, talk it out. Have a sounding board who sometimes might not even say anything back, just listens and you know, nods and understands. It, it's the empathy and compassion part, you know, somebody just to listen. Because yeah. We, we sort of work ourselves into an emotional frenzy in our heads where, and, and then we, we sort of feel like there's no way out. And, mm -hmm. the, and there kind of, there is a way out actually. Just go and talk to somebody about it and get it out of your head. Yeah. Because it's just, I think those, and, and, and I'm able to say this because I, I go through the same struggles myself as well where, sure, there's times like any other entrepreneur where I, where I have doubts and worries and concerns and things like that, but I'll tell you, it feels a hell of a lot better to to get those out there and also to, I'm very analytical like you, and I like to just slice and dice and look at things from different angles and what if this, what if that, and mm. um, I find that uh, in the past I've been guilty as well of doing the paralysis by analysis uh, type of thing, and, and again, by... By capturing what's in our head it, in these in these documents, in the spreadsheets, in, in the Word document, you know where those things are and you're confident that you've done the planning and the analysis and that you can move on from that phase. Because I think what happens is some people just never step out of the planning and, and sort of analysis phase. They're just yeah, always no, analyzing. I absolutely agree. I mean, that is, um, that's a huge one. I found, yeah, you just spend a lot of time planning and planning and kind of waiting for the... Uh, waiting, waiting for the water to be still, and it's it's not going to be still. I think also you have to. I mean, some of these things there's a lot of copy involved, um, and setting up some of these uh, systems uh, initially is going to take a bit of work and be some projects. But um, the, the other side of that, though, is that you're waiting for everything to be perfect, and and nothing's ever going to just be perfect. 
that you're never going to have that perfect time to start, I think. Nope. No, and, and a great quote that I heard was, we overestimate what we can do in the short term, and we underestimate what we can do in the long term. And, and what I take away from that quote is that there's going to be short-term failure. And it, it's almost a condition of success because I don't know anybody who's succeeded at anything in life and hasn't had some short-term failure. Oh, and, no, and no. I mean, I use the word failure in the broad term, broadest sense of the term. You know, failure could be defined as, hey, you're on the basketball team and you're taking lots of risk by taking lots of shots, but you know, maybe you maybe you missed the game-winning basket, but hey, at least you're taking the risk of taking the shots. Like, was it, uh, you know, Michael Jordan said, you know, that, that he, it was something about the number of baskets that he actually missed in his career relative to the number he actually made. Because most people focus on the number of buckets that he made, but he says, hey, I wouldn't have made that many had I not taken that, you know, that many shots. Yeah. Makes sense yeah. to me. Yeah. So, so, so even the most successful people, you know, failure is an inherent part of success because it means you're taking enough risk to succeed. Mm. And if you just That's sit good. in your bedroom worrying all the time and overanalyzing and taking a year to get your advertisement done and whatever else, sorry, you're not failing enough. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, and life's just going to, it seems life will pass you by pretty quick, you know? Yeah, there's, there's a window of opportunity for these things, and you really have to pounce on it when you have it because, the you know, momentum is your scarce resource there. And once you have it, you've got to go and just power through, power through. And, yeah, that's, that's definitely what you need. Hmm. So, so let's, um, let's get back to goals, strategies, and tactics. So I, okay. I think we're pretty good on the strategies department now, for now, Chris. Yeah. We, okay. Yeah, I think you agree. So let's get down to tactics. So the, the, the question is, the tactic section is really about the low level, you know, what are all the different platforms or tools or channels that you're going to be using um, to, uh, I guess you could say, express these strategies one way or another. Yeah. So, so let's, and we, we've listed a bunch of your channels in your daily action planner. So yeah, can you just like tell me the ones that we like listed in there? Tactics is very, very linked to the uh, the daily action planner. Absolutely. So let's just, if you could please just read out a bunch of your your, 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 your tactics, like your channels. Okay, um, off the top of my head, there's YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Um, there's the telephone polls, the actual physical uh, marketing. Um, um, uh, new tip of the day newsletter that we were talking about. Um, just my website in general. That's a part of it, having that be in shape. Um, that's kind of off the top of my head, but it's just it's a lot of stuff that was in the action planner. Yeah. So, so, so the the leap from your tactics in this document, in your strategies to tactics goal document, the leap from that to the action planner is the action planner adds the frequency part of it. So how often? Yes. So which ones and how often? The way I think of it in, in, tact, in the tactics part of this particular plan is just to, I like to just list the name of the, the, name of the tool or the platform okay. in, this part, in this part of the plan. So instead of saying, I'm going to use YouTube to do this, this, and this, just say YouTube. Yeah, yeah. So, so one tactic is, you know, one tactic that I will use to achieve these strategies above is YouTube. Yeah. And 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 you don't have to say any more than that because yeah. you've already said it all in the daily action planner. Mm-hmm. So you so you mentioned YouTube, you yep. mentioned Facebook, you mentioned Twitter, you mentioned Google, you mentioned the telephone polls where you'll be putting your ads up, you mentioned, well, you didn't mention, but I'll mention now, the, the you know, the bulletin boards in coffee shops or, yeah, or bookstores, yeah. libraries, you know, all these different places. Um, you know, you could put an ad above urinals if you wanted, like whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not necessarily recommending that, but... Uh, <laughs> Probably won't, but that's, you could. <laughs> you could, yeah. Now, tactics. So, there's some interest, interesting linkages... Upward from tactics to strategy and downward from strategies to tactics. So the first linkage would be 
downward from a strategy to these tactics. So let's use power of music, Chris. So your strategy, okay. your, your big picture idea concept called power of music. You can discuss this idea of power of music through probably most of those tactics. Would you agree? Yes. So you could discuss the power of music through YouTube. You could discuss it on Facebook by sharing an article link. You could uh, you could discuss the power of music on Twitter by sharing, you know, this one three-minute practice hack increased my effectiveness by whatever. You could share that thing on you. You know, there's so many ways you can do it, but the point of the matter is that you can discuss this idea of the power of music through probably most, if not all, of your tactics. Okay. Okay, so, so it's sort of a one-to-many idea there, but then yeah. coming back the other way, let's take YouTube as a single tactic. Do you think that you could use YouTube to achieve one or more of your strategies that you listed in your strategy section? Oh, absolutely. Um, okay, c c comment on that if you might, how, how that might work. Um, YouTube, I could make, um, let's see... Uh, you know, in strategies, we talk about uh, being the most credible, um, something like that. Um, I could make YouTube videos that um, where I talk about music things or music tips or show things that give me credibility. Be, be more specific. What, what would give you credibility in a um, YouTube video? What, what could you talk about? Something where I play something, or I, guess, I don't know if that's... Like, so, well, I, I can talk all day and say guitar, 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 but if I say, this is good with the guitar, this has helped help me, do 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 Yeah. So, I, so I, I, providing some proof. Yeah, basically. that's exactly it. So proof okay. is a great way of establishing credibility. Okay. Now, you've just opened a can of worms here because I'm trying to think about where proof is going to fit. We need a place for proof to live in this document somehow. Okay. Um, would you put it in, strat in, in your strategies or your tactics? Um, that's a good question. I think it's a tactic, Chris. Okay. okay. And the reason is because you're, what, you, what you would want to... It, yeah, it, it's lower level. The reason is because you, you would want to show proof of the power of music. Okay. Yeah, and that's how I think it would work. Now, there, now we have to think of this as a. I mean, there's some overlap in this tactic section, and yeah. and this this idea of proof overlaps with the idea of YouTube. I think. Okay. Um. Okay. So, so what we were talking about is how one tactic or channel or platform or tool called YouTube links up to, you know, you can use YouTube to to achieve or express a bunch of those strategies. Yeah. Um, and, and you've mentioned that showing proof is a great way of establishing credibility. Mm -hmm. But it also turns out that showing proof of your skills is, is another great way to increase trust, to show that you're the expert. I mean, it, it really hits True. on all True. of those strategic objectives. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it seems like the, uh, everything's not going to be, not black and white, but it seems there's going to definitely be overlap in a lot of these. Yeah, um, and that's and that. I, yeah, and what it is is... I think, it, Chris, it's the sum total of all of the different overlaps between all these circles that overlap each other. I think that's the power of a holistic approach like this. Yeah, most Because definitely. I think what other people do is they'll have one or two circles, but they don't really overlap, and they're these little islands of effort. Mm. Whereas when you're doing these overlapping circles that are all linked together very intentionally and very purposefully, I just think it's a much more powerful approach. Yeah, I agree. Because you you you've defined what's defined, um, you know, the what's happening behind the curtain. You 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 know what's happening behind the scenes in the factory. You know, and yeah. people can copy what you're doing. They can copy your videos. They can copy any of your tactics. But if they don't understand your strategy, sorry, you're gonna win. You're gonna be the one who wins. Yeah, no, that makes sense, and, and it I mean, makes sense that a lot of the strategy stuff is kind of behind the scenes. Um, yeah, and it's, um, I mean, I, I guess I would use Cirque du Soleil as another example where 
they came out and their strategy was not to be the best circus, like the most expensive. Their strategy wasn't to be the cheapest circus. It was to be the, the what Eben Pagan calls the new and unique solution, where they took the elements of circus, such as, um, you know, the acrobatics, and they removed the animals and that sort of element, and then they, they added the, the acrobatics plus this sort of live theatrics to create something totally unique. Yeah. So that was their strategy was to, um, you know, remove the animal parts of it and then increase the theatrics of it, I, I guess you would say, and, and, and keep the acrobatic part. So that was really their strategy. Yeah. And, and there's a book I read recently called Blue Ocean Strategy, which talks about how uh, companies like Cirque du Soleil did this. Uh, have you heard of Yellowtail Wine? Do you have them states? Um, I have heard of them, yes. Yeah, Yellowtail. It's a very, very popular wine up, up here in Canada. It's from Australia, and okay. it's known as being... Um, it's a blend of wines, but it's a very easy-to-drink wine. It's very accessible, and, and they what they did was they removed the snobbery from wine. That was their strategy. Mm. Mm. Sim so increase, increase the simplifying and decrease the snobbery and complexity. Yeah. Yeah. So if you go through this book, Blue Ocean, Blue Ocean Strategy, they go through like dozens of case studies where they talk about what these behind-the-scenes strategies were. And again, you, you know, if you were running a winery, you could easily copy Yellowtail's ads. You could copy a whole bunch of their things. But if you don't know the high-level hardcore strategies that are, that are in the heads of the top-level people, you know, you're not going to beat them. <laughs> yeah. Were you saying this book was called Blue... Blue Ocean Strategy. Okay. Yeah, great book. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, geez. I mean, there's a whole other, whole other hangout on the topic of blue ocean strategy and all the tools and concepts and strategies mm. that come out of that book. But we don't have time for that today. Um, certainly, my own thinking on strategy and my own learning has been very much guided by that book. Mm. Yeah. So, our last point here was that any single tactic, such as YouTube, can link up to you know, one or all of the strategies above, and the, the, the inverse to that is that any single strategy can be discussed or expressed in any of the tactical channels, I guess you could say. Yeah, so you make sure that your tactics have some point and that they link to the strategies and the goals. They're not just, let's do this to be busy. Yeah, and so what we're really saying here is there's vertical linkages, between yeah. strategy, tactics, and goals, and there's horizontal linkages um, in terms of the time element, which is, you know, how often, you know, the frequency. Yeah, yeah. And why I like this idea of horizontal linkages is because it implies that it's chronological and time-based. I find that going cross, you know, going horizontal is very intuitive from thinking about time. Yes. So that's why I designed that daily action planner that way. Hmm. I mean, you're not going to design the days. I mean, you could design, I guess, the days of the month vertically, but why? That doesn't really make sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, that's how I suppose that's how it comes in your. If you bought it like a paper-based day planner, that's how it would be in your in your calendar, your day planner. But I just I like that idea of days of the month, and it's just that big dashboard of activity that uh, um, makes it so. It, it's like a built-in to-do list. You, like you don't even really have to barely formulate a to-do list every day. It's already been done for you. Yeah, and for me, that's just huge, I mean, because time is limited. Um, yep. I mean, for all of us, we only have 24 hours in the day. Um, yep. And for a lot of us, we're kind of doing it alone um, yep. or with very limited assistance. So, yep. uh, Chris, if you, were, if you were to have some assistance, either from one person or from a group or from a group of collaborators, what do you think that help or assistance would look like? I think the thing that I would like um, and something like that is um, someone to kind of help be a presence for me um, socially um, on Facebook, Twitter, things like that. And someone also to, you know, I, I would develop the copy and someone just to help spread it out for me um, yeah. or do research for me, find things for me. Yeah. Um, I've got a new blog I just... I'm starting up right now, awesome. um, and it it's it's involved uh, with a lot with instrumental music. So if I had cool. someone to help me find 
different instrumental music to check out. Just things where I don't have to do all the work. Things that can take out the, the yeah. busy work, I guess. Uh, things like that would be huge. Yeah, you've raised some very good points there. Let's take this to the next level, Chris, and say what you wanted some help with is the busy work in terms of spreading yourself out there and getting yourself out there. Yeah. There are ways that you can actually automate that by preparing a checklist or, or a brief set of instructions that you would hand to somebody else, like a virtual assistant, either you know in the States or offshore in another mm -hmm. country. I've used virtual assistants um, from Argentina, from I've used some from the States, I've used some from India and from the Philippines. So I've, I've worked with virtual assistants in different time zones. This was in a previous project about four years ago, but you know, what you end up having is a team that works 24-7, 365 in, you know, time, the different times. So you're like arbitraging the time zones. So yeah. when Chris is sleeping, something is happening in his business, you know? Uh, yeah, something like that would be huge. How's your experience yeah. been with, with uh, virtual assistants? Totally mixed bag. It, mm. it, it depends on a lot of factors. It depends on what the time zone differences are. Okay. And one thing you may not have thought of is the cultural differences and how the cultural differences influence communication and, okay. and, comprehend, and comprehension. So, for instance, people from India have a very different style of communication than people from the Philippines. Okay. And, and one is neither good nor bad. It's not They're about being... It's not better or worse. It's just different. Yeah. And being a Canadian, I mean, we have a, I mean, basically an identical style of communication and, and, and pretty much an identical culture to the States. So yes. I'm very accustomed with the north-south communication, but the, yeah. the, the, the west-east is a, sometimes a little bit trickier. What I would say is the Philippines was quite a bit easier, I found, than India. Okay. And the reason is, like, I actually, there, there's quite a sizable Filipino community here in Vancouver, and... They are some of the friendliest people I've ever met from any culture anywhere, and it's it's just their culture. They're just they're just friendly. They're very family and community oriented, and they're very sort of relationship oriented, and they're very loyal. And hmm. um, I found that sometimes the the people from India were a little more sort of intellectual and aloof. Okay, just that's just from my own experience. Yeah. Um, in terms of specific recommendations that you could use for. Um, doing some small, tiny experiments with virtual assistants. Um, I would use Odesk, Chris. Odesk, okay. Yeah, Odesk. Yes. I've used, there's another one called the Elance. I mean, there's, there's many of these things, but yeah. I, I've used Odesk with some success in the past, and you can, oh God, I mean, virtual assistants, that's a whole other hangout topic. We could spend an entire hour talking about virtual assistants, but the, yeah. the, the very, very quick snapshot overview here would be where you think of these as auditions. Yes. Where they're not hired. They're, you know, it, it's a trial run. It's a test. They're auditioning. And if they pass the audition, then they get to move to the second audition, which is a little longer period. But it's just this idea of auditions where okay. um, they're, they're always sort of fighting to prove that they deserve the work, basically. Okay. Would you say, would you think that it would be beneficial to spend a little bit of time doing research um, on different cultures, major cultures that are represented in, in the community. Like, do a little research on India, find out a little bit what they're about, find out what this is about, this is about, so that I could um, communicate better with them or have a... Does that make sense? Would that be any kind of a value? Yeah, um, just to be clear, are you talking about for your own students or for your own communication with virtual assistants? I'm talking about for my own communication with virtual assistants. Uh, no, I don't think you, you don't need to do a bunch of research. You just need to get in there and start doing it. What The, the okay. thing you're going to notice is um, they're either going to want to sort of work in your hours and your time zone or they're not. Okay. And if they're not, it means that you're going to be on Skype at 7 in the morning or tonight because that's how the time zones work. Yeah. So 10 at night is there sort of 8 in the morning or whatever. It, 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 that's not quite what it is, but that's sort of conceptually what it is. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and I remember just being, you know, by 10 o'clock at night I was wiped and I just didn't really have much left. So I, I didn't really enjoy those sessions at 10 at night. Hmm. 
And for that matter, I you know, um, I don't normally get up at seven. So I mean that 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 might work for you. I mean, with kids, you're probably up that early anyway. But um, oh, I'm up early. Yeah, yeah. So um, let's let's move on from the topic of virtual assistants, okay. though, Chris. Because seriously, we could do a two-hour hangout on that easy another time. Yeah, that's a good um, intro, though. That's something to yeah. kind of think about and work with. Well, and, and just I'll leave you with one teaser from that. So the one teaser is a previous business that I had was Mark giving tours in Europe via Google. So I would form relationships okay. with the top tour guides over there, and I would collect all their tour itineraries, and I had them all on one website, well organized, easy to find, and then I would take a cut of any booking that was made because I was like an affiliate, basically. Yeah. That was the idea. I wanted to automate how I formed relationships with tour guides and got their itineraries onto my site. So what I did is... Uh, I had a virtual assistant in the Philippines for $3 an hour. Actually, I had two of them working on this after a while. They would be going on the internet and searching for the names, phone numbers, and email addresses and social media URLs of these tour guides, which are publicly okay. accessible because the tour guides are marketing their business, right? Yeah. I had these virtual assistants collecting the contact information and putting it into an online database, like a CRM, basically. Mm -hmm. And then... I, the founder, would get on the phone and do like super focused call blocks where I would actually contact them, form the relationship, and then, you know, get, get their permission to sort of put the itineraries on the site and, and, and get the agreement that, hey, if there's any bookings, then we'll, we'll take a cut. And this is, you know, I'm, I'm sort of your, your affiliate or, or your, your agent, I guess. Yeah. Um, anyway, point of the matter is that, you know, I was playing off the time zones of two virtual assistants so that this was happening 24-7, 365. Yeah. I mean, maybe not three. I mean, they took two days off a week, but you, I think you get the idea mm -hmm. here. And if you find these little act ongoing, like, like what they need to be is simple, repeatable, and mundane and low value. Okay. And I, I can tell you this another time. This is really easy to understand. Yeah. Um, because those people overseas, they can't do a YouTube video where, where you rip through a little something and you're like, hey, here's the key insight you need to be able to rip through this yourself. Yeah. Uh, they, they can't make that video. You're the only guy that can do that. Yeah. But there's a heck of a lot of people that could go online and... Search for whatever. Yeah, or, or, or in your case, it might be, you know, submit different blog comments or collect contact info of different potential adult students or whatever it is they would do. Yeah, yeah. Which are things that are taking up time. I mean, that's the main yeah. main point yeah. is things that are that I that I have to do that yeah. just take up a lot of time and eat the day away. Yeah, so actually this leads into a point from my last hangout which I just wrapped up actually before we started this one. Mm. What we were talking about was I was asked, okay, so assuming that somebody has a zero dollar budget for increasing their their traffic online, you know, what should they do and how should they do it? And what I said is, if you're going to be doing free traffic generation, it's essentially an exercise in efficiency and extreme productivity. Okay. Because by by definition, the way that you're generating the traffic is you're putting in the time, you're putting in the work. Yeah. So if you're going to be doing work, why not figure out the hacks to make yourself, you know, extremely productive? And, and not just kind of productive, but, like, what are the extreme bounds of productivity, you know, like within a practical realm, you know? Yeah. So, so the topic that came out of that was practical techniques for extreme productivity in generating traffic online. Okay. I'll repeat it. Practical techniques for extreme productivity for increasing traffic online. So okay. what I like about that is what we're talking about is we're talking we're not talking about, hey, go and submit two comments on, on one blog per day. We're saying like, hey, what if you want to increase your productivity by 10x? Maybe what you need to be doing is commenting on a hundred different blog posts a day. And just sort of getting used to the extremes at like the outer bounds of these things where yeah. If your budget is zero, hey, again, it, it's an efficiency gain. It's all about productivity. Okay. If it's all about productivity, how might we increase our productivity? You know, 
one thing that works for me is to scope down the size of each unit of productivity. So that's what I talk about in this three by three idea. Mm. If you're going to be commenting on blog posts, probably not best not to write an essay each time because you won't have time. True, true. So just expect to do a two or three or four liner. You know, keep 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 the line length short um, horizontally. Keep the line length short vertically, and just hammer it out. And you've got to submit a unique comment. Like you can't just clone the same comment over and over again. Yeah. Um, you need to reword it enough that it's unique and that it won't be considered duplicate content. And okay. it has to add value. Like, you can't just be spamming this crap out there, right? Yeah. Um, but, again, if it's a productivity game, you know, set up the conditions for extreme productivity. So, for me, that's having a stopwatch going, where each time I'm going to maybe submit a comment or something, I literally, the clock is ticking, and I've got three minutes. Mm. And that, that's just the system I've come up with, with for myself. And... You know, sometimes the comment is done in 30 seconds. Sometimes it's five minutes because I have to log in on their site or, you know, whatever it is. But yeah, yeah. getting back to the point here, you, what you're really talking about is productivity. How do we squeeze the most productivity out of the least amount of time each day? Yeah. And you're not going to do that by being random, scattershot, and sort of, you know, with, with a random mishmash of activities. Like, you've got to be really organized and calculated about it and then, like, mm. go hard. Okay. So... <laughs> anyway, that's yet another hangout would be the <laughs> the idea of practical techniques for extreme productivity in all of these things. I think that's the key thing. And I say practical because I mean practical. I don't mean, hey, let's sit around and theorize about how to do 100 blog comments a day. I'm like, hey, man, if you're going to be doing 100 blog comments a day, you know, why, you better figure out the most efficient ways to do it, you know? Yeah, most definitely. It and I guess like the other side... Of it seems like in all of these things, I mean, the one of the main goals is just to keep pushing and to keep focusing and to keep getting better and not just being okay with how things are. You know, if you do something and you're efficient, how can I get more efficient? You get more efficient, okay, how can I get more efficient? And, and it's kind of in everything. It's in your strategies and your tactics and everything. It's, it's It seems like it goes across the but board just trying yeah. to maximize everything you're doing. Well, I think what ends up happening is if you start with this sort of blurry sphere of stuff, I think what ends up happening is everything gradually gets refined and focused and focused so that you have a few orbs of, like, extreme focus of some sort, I think. Yeah. And that's just a very abstract way of saying it, but if you think about it, we start with all this sort of stuff in our head, all these ideas and questions, concerns, worries, doubts, anxieties, you know, big ideas, little ideas, all sorts of stuff is floating around, but... It has to be this process of elimination where we get rid of the crap that's not a, not working enough, not efficient enough, not customer focused enough. We it's like it's almost like reverse paint by numbers, Chris. Mm. Yeah, where you're 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 painting the picture of success by unpainting the numbers that aren't working. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I if, like that. If, that's a good that's a good one. And I just came up with that right now. It's awesome. <laughs> Um, because I mean, no, you could look at it. You could look at the inverse, which would be you can you can do this sort of paint paint by numbers way of success by if you know what the numbers are and you have the pen in your hand, all you got to do is you know color in the right the right colored uh, felt for the right number, and then you can yeah. you know, paint by numbers to create your picture. But I guess we don't the other way to think know about what those it, things are until we get going. That's the thing. I mean, it's it's such no, a process don't. that it's. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it seems like nothing ever goes exactly like you think it's going to on paper. No. Uh, no. So I think the reverse painting by numbers by unpainting the ones that aren't working is that that's more realistic, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm big on sort of the practical approaches to these things. I I don't I'm I'm not an ideas for ideas sake kind of a guy. If I was, I'd be in academia. Yeah. And just you know pontif pontificating on sort of ivory tower stuff that's not relevant to anybody outside of that ivory tower. Mm. You know, I, I'm big on, hey, if we're going to be talking about extreme productivity, let's not pontificate and sit around. Let's, like, let's get that friggin' stopwatch out and, 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 you know, you get going, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, because without implementation, all of this is a waste of time. So. Yeah, <laughs> very true. But let, let's flip around. So the opposite of reverse paint by numbers is paint by numbers where you... 
I would think of the numbers in this perspective as being the things that you discover over time that work. Okay. Um, and, 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 I mean, I don't know if you're noticing, but in all these Hangouts, we're gradually sort of trimming away the fluff in terms of all the stuff you're doing, and we're, we're getting more and more focused over time, I think. Yes, very much. Like you said, not only on the ideas and the concepts and the strategies and the, 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 the methods and all these different things, but we're, we're getting you more focused as a person. Yeah. And, and, and you know, the, the product here is not spreadsheets and, and, and any, of, any of that type of... The product is really you. And, and I don't like to use the word product, but, you know, I'm in the business of helping you create a better you just as you're in the business of helping your students create a better them. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the end result. What we're really after here is the end result, not the means. These, you know, the daily action plan, that's just a means. Your, um, your lesson plan, that's just a means. It's, it's mm -hmm. all about the end result and that transformation over time, for sure. Yeah. Anyway, we've really meandered away from strategies and tactics and goals, but that's okay because uh, sometimes fun. Tell me. And, 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 and fun, fun in, the, in the meandering. Um, let's get back to the topic, which was strategies, tactics, goals. Um, I want to make sure that we've adequately covered the tactics. So okay. we talked about sort of the idea of channels as tactics. So we talked yes. about YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all these different things. You know, your blog that you're launching. We yeah. talked about, um, I guess you could say, touch, touch points as tactics. So, you know, the, the bulletin board, the telephone poles that you would put your ads on, you know, those mm -hmm. are touch points. Oh, one strategy we didn't really talk about is, I guess you could say, power of referrals. Okay, yeah. Why I think that's a strategy is because we need to think about how we can implement that tactically and yeah. how you can create automated systems that enable power of referrals to do its work. Yeah. Uh, we talked so about we could, that, I think, uh, yeah. the action planner with uh, the tip of the week and then using a, an email signature and things yeah. like that that would uh, forward. But yeah. that's, I think that's important to remember for sure. Great. That's, yeah, that's, and that's a very practical example of how to put that strategy and tactic and, you know, automate the system and, to, you know, put it into the signature in, the, in your automated emails. I, I love that. It's sort of the full circle where we, we, we hit on all the fronts there. Yeah. Back to tactics. Are we missing anything in terms of... Okay, so, so one way to think about tactics is who are your prospects, Chris, and where do they hang out? So... Let me ask you a question. So your adult students, uh, where do they hang out? Or where well, are they reachable? Let's see. I don't... Let's see. They... Okay, it looks like we've frozen a little bit there. Uh, let me know when you come back on, Chris. So as, as Chris is uh, getting the technical end sorted out on his end, I would like to continue on this thread of discussing where your customers hang out, basically. So we were discussing where Chris's customers who are adult students hang out. And I think it's useful to think about this topic from a number of perspectives, some maybe a bit out of the box. Hello. You back in there, Chris? So much for Max, I'll tell you. It just like logged me uh, out randomly. I've got you. I've got you in this call as a third participant who's free nice. framed. <laughs> Talking with myself and you. I was gonna say, ask yourself a question. <laughs> oh, good lord! That's... Yeah. Um, Interesting. So we were talking about um, where now, do they hang out? Where do my, where do my adult students hang out? Um, I think yeah, they yeah, golf. So, so just, just, just time. They do things like that. They, they golf. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so okay. I'm sure something a place like a golf course or a golf forums, things like that. I could probably find them. Um, yeah. So I guess I, 
I, I meant that question in a more abstract sense, where the reality is they might be kind of everywhere. You know, they they might be on YouTube, they might be on Facebook, they oh, might be on Google, they channels. might be yeah, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. So those are the channels. Those are the right. tactical channels where we we kind of know they're reachable that way. And maybe some yeah. of them are going on to Google and searching for a music teacher. My, my hunch is that they're probably not, but some of them are. You know, like like a, there's a number of them that probably are. Yeah. Um. I guess where I'm going with this, for the most power here, you're right. I think a golf course is a fantastic idea because golfers are affluent. <laughs> yes. And I also think that golfers are the type of people who, they're sort of power and status oriented where, um, you know, you got to have the biggest driver on the course and you got to be the big dog and there's sort of... Um, you know, conspicuous consumption, I think. You know, you've got to show up in the big, long car. To, you know, you're, you're sort of, uh, you know, you drive the V8 car because you, you've got that status. And, you know, golf is mm -hmm. a corporate game, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is for the, I guess you could say, the men's side of, of um, golf. Yeah. Um, the women's side, that might be a separate, a separate thread. But let's just stick with men for now. Oh, actually, that would be another question. Do you have any female students who are adults? Um, not right now, but I have. Did you? I don't know if that last question came through. Okay, okay. Let's stick with men for now, just because okay. it's a bit easier to, to think about in this particular um, thread. Golf courses, great idea, man. Um, the other thing would be, uh, where are these people reachable um, in addition to golf courses where they, they probably wouldn't expect to see an ad for you know, one of your ads for, for music lessons. Like, like, in addition to golf courses, where are some of the places where no other music teachers are showing up with their ads? Um, well, if they golf, um, they might be into fine wines, things like that, um, yes. and travel, places Good. like that. Um, so I think finding websites or things that have to do with... Um, the finer things, um, in, in that in that sense of the word, um, I think that might be an interesting place to find people that they wouldn't expect, um, and it might be might be good. Yeah, Chris, counter we were talking about the counter counterintuitive yeah um, um, aspect, and it seems like that that would fit there. The 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 analysis and detective work is quite interesting with this stuff because you kind of can't predict the rabbit hole. It it, it gets quite interesting. Yeah, but it seems but, like it'd be worth a try. I mean, and, and yeah. if something's there, something's there, and if it's not, then you can check it off the list and try the next. Let's put it this way. If there's no risk of time and no risk of money, and there's only upside, then go for it. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, and better yet, have some neighborhood kid that's going and biking around and putting these up for you. You know, Automate it. Delegate yeah. it. Yeah. Chris Chris doesn't go around to golf courses anymore and put up, uh, put up these ads, you know? You, if you can delegate it, it's, it's the best way to go. And I realize you need a budget for that, but you know, use your but creativity. Still, you, know, you can start small, you know. And if 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 uh, even down the line, say I say I don't have a budget right now. Well, if I can uh, work on getting my five students, then I have a little bit more of a budget. Then I can say I'm going to put aside X, and I'm going to start. It seems like you can start. It may take a little bit to really get the ball rolling, but you can start from someplace, you know. Or you could um, even barter. You could barter less. Lessons for some of this stuff too. True. Yeah. Although the impact of bartering lessons, you probably want to make sure that uh, um, <laughs> that you're kind of getting the better end of the stick there. Where um, you know, if you're going to be setting aside 30 minutes of your time to do in, to do a lesson, that you're really getting good value for that bartered exchange. But you, you oh, I mean, yeah. you'll you'll figure that out whether it's right yeah. or not. Yeah. Um, let's have some fun here, Chris. Shall we? Add a goal, which would be by such and such a date, should we think of um, 10 related interests that people have? Okay. Yeah. I just That's like good. the idea of, of, of yeah. sort of hard coding that in somewhere so that we're, we're thinking about it. Yeah. And this is a pretty small goal. This isn't the same as sort of generate five students, but it might be related to generating five students because if you're putting up ads where nobody else is and you're reaching your best prospects where nobody else is reaching them in a way that is kind of makes sense. I mean, you can kind of get away with it. 
Uh, that's pretty powerful. Yeah, I like that one. Especially, Chris, if they are exposed to your ads multiple times because they saw you on the golf course and then they saw your ad in Whole Foods when they were walking out. Yeah. You know? It's that repetition, man, because, you know, I wrote an article on the number of touch points required for a sale, and, I mean, everybody I that. knows it. Yeah. yeah, everybody knows you've got to see an ad multiple times before the sale. It's common wisdom that the sale doesn't happen on the first meeting, that you might have to, or, or that it doesn't happen on the first phone call. You've got to make 12 phone calls and follow up, you know, maybe another 12 before you get the sale, you know. It, it, yeah. It's, it's yeah. all about repeats. Yeah. Um. Through, through 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 all this stuff. So, um, I, I'm going to be really intrigued actually to find out um where you're putting up these ads according to these ten related interests that people yeah. have. And I could I mean, and, potentially do this across different. I mean, I could do it for more than just I could, uh, you know, I could uh, by whatever day have uh, you know X uh, related interests for adult students, for kid students, for parents. Yeah. I mean, I could break it down into categories and try and really try and dig in and find out who who my customers are. Chris, let's add a strategy called related interests. Okay. Reason being, that's going to permeate almost everything you do. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what 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 related interest means? Related interest is a targeting criteria. Okay. Because if you're on Facebook, you've got to decide who's going to see your ads. Well, if you find out that you've got a bunch of adult students that are between the ages of 40 to 60 and they're all males who golf, well, yeah. that's pretty pretty important information Yeah. for targeting your ads because you don't want to have your ads, you don't want to have to be paying for any wasted advertising whatsoever. Yeah. So the more targeted you can be about their exact interests and their exact age and where they are, the more focused everything is. Mm. So... And, and I don't know. We might have to get rid of the goal because we put this in strategies. I mean, I'm, I, I'm, you know. <laughs> we'll see, but it's a starting place. You know what I mean? And then yeah, yeah. Sit and refine this and get it all in stone. It yeah. seems like everything would kind of work itself out, you know. Yeah, and, and, and like I said, it, it, it could be that you get rid of the goal because you've accounted for this already in terms of your your strategy. But um, I just like that everything is accounted for in in this whole sort of. Yeah. I don't know. Everything's accounted for. You know, it, it's sort of like in. In accounting, every cent is accounted for. You know, yeah. like it, it it lives somewhere. You know. Yeah. So so the numbers aren't living in the accountant's head. The numbers are living in the ledger in the exact right places. You know. Mm. Yeah. Got something in your eye. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. So we were talking about. Uh, oh, so the question was, you know, who are your 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 best prospects and where do they hang out and and we sort of answer that by defining what their 10 related interests might be we've created a strategy for that called related interests which is a targeting criteria which it turns out that you can use throughout all of your different tactics yeah um and again you can you can use this on youtube so if you, you know youtube is your other tactic well i don't know maybe it's possible to target ads to just golfers on youtube that are between the ages of 30 and 40, or sorry, 40 and 60 who are males in Orange County. I don't know. Maybe yeah. it's it's worth thinking about because once you know who they are, you're able to focus your ad spend on just those people and it's just so much more focused and targeted and, and, and efficient. Mm. You know, what, what you don't want to be doing is, is flailing dollars around all over the place and you have no idea of what's working and why like yeah i don't have those dollars this approach so, you know it's you really got to no no you know, no smart and, uh, yeah. yeah 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 but that's the, but then by combining i mean paper based advertisements you know your telephone pole ad your bulletin board ads and stuff those aren't going to cost much i mean what is it going to cost no. a penny a sheet or something it's just nothing yeah, i mean chris you don't even really need to do these in color because it's really it's the power of well-researched black and white text. Here, I'm sorry, black text on a white piece of paper. That's enough to sell. Yeah. As long as you have a good headline, bolded and a little bit bigger, and is is focused on the prospect's pain points. Mm -hmm. As long as you're prospect focused and throughout the whole thing, and then you you end with like a logical offer that makes sense. All you need is black text on a white piece of paper. You know that that photocopy is going to cost you one cent. Yeah. 
and 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 that photocopy that cost you one cent and it cost I don't know fifty cents of some kid's time to put that up in Whole Foods for you. I mean, who knows how long that ad could be up for? Maybe it could be ad up for weeks. Like, yeah, that's pretty good return for that little a spend. You know, let's yeah. say let's say that ad costs you fifty cents of the kid's time to put it up and one cent for the photocopying. Well, fifty one cents to be up in Whole Foods for a few weeks. Hey, that, that's worth trying, man. Yeah, it is very much. Now, we need to we need to account for the idea of tracking here somehow. So okay. let's think about how you might track these ads and potentially down to the individual. Well, this might get a bit a bit hairy, but I was just thinking to the individual ad level so that you could know that, hey, I got four students from Whole Foods from that one ad, you know? Well, it seems like if I get students wherever I get students from, if I say, how'd you hear about me? Ah. Uh, like, you know, something like that, I could kind of, I could yeah. kind of answer that and then um, I could keep a, a record of where those are and kind of tally them and see what's going on. Yeah, I, I definitely would. And it, it might be a little bit excessive to be doing it down to the individual ad sheet level, but... Um, but it turns where to hear about me, Whole Foods, or, you know, I saw a flyer. Yeah. Okay, yeah. you know, you know yeah. something's working. Now, I'm, I'm guessing that there are other music teachers that have stuff up at Whole Foods, so you're going to have to figure out on that big bulletin board of, you know, 30, 40, 50 different pieces of 8.5 by 11 paper. I mean, you know, you, you will have to figure out how you're going to kind of show up on there and stuff, but... Um, <laughs> by not saying guitar lessons. Yes, Again. thank you! And yes. a phone number. <laughs> so, um, that's it. <laughs> Man, all, that's steps everywhere. Yeah, all, all you have to do is just basically do the opposite of what everybody else is doing, which is bad ads. So all you have to do is is write an ad that's just not a bad ad, and you'll, you know. Yeah, it seems like that. I mean, that that alone it's, would it, be huge. I, I've been thinking a lot about that, you know, over the past little while since you talked about it, and I've seen a few, I've been a few places that have those kind of things, and it's it's bad. It's really what, bad. What are, you, what, are you, what are you seeing out there? Just like piano lessons, the person's name and a phone number. That's it. Um, do you feel like Do you feel like that ad is speaking to you? No, I feel like I just see it as an opportunity to um, be better. I guess. Yeah. In, in a way, um, it seems like. I guess oh, you know, there's enough room for everyone to. Uh, make a living and, and do those things and stuff. But if people are going to do um, bad advertising, that works for me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. take advantage of their okay, lack Chris, of knowledge on here, the subject, I guess. Here's how I see it. I was having a conversation uh, with my father yesterday who's been a, a successful independent financial planner for 30 years. So he's, mm -hmm. he's been running his own business for 30 years. He's bought and sold a couple of other businesses with, with sort of mixed... Well, some have been successful, some some kind of cratered, but overall he's been very successful. Hmm. We were having a conversation, and, and I asked him, I said, Dad, why do you think it is that most marketing just plain sucks? And, 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 and I said to him, I think it's just because people don't really know how to do it. And so they they... They just do what they kind of know how to do, which is, okay, I guess I'll, you know, they kind of mope around and they put their tear sheet ad up on the bulletin board and it looks the same as everybody else's and they're doing it because they think that's what works. And, and I mean, the thing is, some of it can work. Like, if you put your tear sheet ad up, you know, saying, drum lessons, Chris, 35 bucks an hour, phone number, I mean, you probably would get some business from that. But yeah. how, much, how much more business would you get if you actually had an ad that when people saw it, they said, hey, this guy really gets me. Well, I've never heard any other music teacher express what he's talking about in these exact ways. Mm. I think that's true. But I think it's like you're right, though. It is. I mean, you do have to give the people credit because they did take the step to make the flyer and hang it up. And that's more yeah. than a lot of people. Um, yeah. I think a lot of us, I mean, myself included, I mean, when I decided to do music, it was, okay, jump in the water, then learn how to swim. I mean, yeah. learning all the business stuff, learning this and that, it was, okay, just try not to drown now, you know? Yeah. And yeah. you have to give them credit for taking the initiative to do something because, you know, for every person that puts something up, even if it's not good, there's, you know, 10, 20 people that are not putting anything up. So I, 
I don't want to underemphasize the importance of what they did, but I don't want to overemphasize it either. What I, what I do want to overemphasize is how important understanding prospect pain points is. Yeah. Because once you understand that, writing ads is easy. Can you see yeah. that now? What's that? I said once you understand your prospect's pain points mm -hmm. and you have a big list of them and you, you can literally go in and pick whichever ones you want because you've created a list of them mm -hmm. and, and, and they're not living in your head anymore. So, so you, can, you can sort of, in your head, you know, make sure you start creating a list of these things so that they have yeah. somewhere to live in your systems. Then you just go and you pluck out whatever one you want when you're writing an ad and it's easy. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Because it's a very again, eye yeah, because again, if you like, let's let's pretend that I'm a, a prospect of yours, which I am, because if you do some sort of an online program, I want to look at it. Uh -huh. um, my personal interest as a customer is, um, I really have a philosophy of playing music where my emphasis is on simplicity and minimalism of playing. So what I really like are the players who are the most economical. Yeah, and they they use the least motion, and they sort of play the least number of, of notes. But those notes are really powerful. I I, I just yeah. I love that sort of fewest number of notes, you know, smallest amount of motion, and just that super simple, just simple, you know, mm -hmm. simple yet powerful. So that's the philosophy. Mm -hmm. So if you, you know, if you wrote an ad and put it up, you know, in the grocery store here, and it said are you an intermediate guitar player who's self-taught, who has never taken a lesson in your life, but you really want to learn how to advance your playing because you really enjoy simple and minimal playing that is powerful? Like, if yeah. you wrote that on a headline, I would read, and I might even call you. Yeah. Any, you know, if you wrote guitar lessons, Chris, 35 and up, forget it. I'm gone. Yeah. If you wrote something like, are you interested in counterintuitive life hacks that enable you to get way more out of way less time? Here's one for you related to playing guitar. Yeah. All it takes, three notes and three minutes a day is all it takes. And then you give them like a, you know, if, if that was the ad and I was, you know, somebody who's interested in sort of tech hacks and life hacks and I saw your music and you were linking to this by calling it sort of music playing and practicing hacks. Well, you got my attention, man. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to read your ad and potentially if you were advertising a URL where I could sign up for your email list or your newsletter or your autoresponder, I might just tear that off on that piece of paper and actually take it home and sign up for your list. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. Only because you expressed some really interesting stuff in your ad. Mm. And that, that is the power of it. And I actually think that this is so important that it's like a key factor of business success, period. Mm. Because it's, it's just customer-focused. And um, some people, when they think about online marketing, Chris, they think about increased traffic to my website. And then once I get traffic, how do I get more conversions on my web pages or my sales pages or my landing pages? And then with the conversions, how do I increase revenue? So how do I upsell and cross-sell? But the problem with that way of thinking is that it's entirely focused on you, the marketer. Yeah. Or you, the business owner, or your business, your goals. It has nothing to do with the prospect's pain points. Mm. So then what happens is you, you end up writing landing page copy that's too focused on you and your products and your business, and it doesn't echo any of the prospect's pain points. Yeah. So let me think of an example. Are you familiar with um, CRM software, Chris? Uh, no. Okay. I don't believe so. What is CRM for? So C CRM, it, it stands for Customer Relationship Management, but what it basically means is it's sort of a place where you could have all, it's like a contacts database. So you, you, okay. you add people's names and email addresses and phone numbers in here, and then you can track how much have you communicated with them, when do you need to follow up, at what okay. intervals. I've the made software. things like that myself. Okay. I've made okay. Databases like that myself in Excel and yeah. things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's so it's basically you could think of it as a as a simple contacts database on steroids. Okay. And there's there's a whole yeah. category for this. The biggest one in the market is called Salesforce, all the way down to these super simple ones. Okay. 
Anyway, it's a whole category of software as a service that, that's out there. And actually, okay. one that I recommend is called Insightly. It's very good, and I use that. What's it Anyhow, called? Anyhow, Insightly. So Insight and then L-Y. Okay. And what was the other one, Salesforce? Oh, no, 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 don't look at Salesforce. That's like 100 bucks a month per person. Yeah, don't look I'm at that. I'm just curious to see what its deal is. I'm, I'm not going to get it. But oh, I see. Okay. Um, just to yeah, kind of, sales, like, see what sales, they're saying. Yeah, so this is CRM. This, this, this is the, yeah, yeah. So that this category is called customer relationship management software, CRM right. for short. Um, the big thing now is called social CRM, and what that means is, let's say that you added one of your adult students into your database, your CRM database. Yeah. What it means is this, the software would go and grab all of their social profile information and put it into their their entry in your database. Okay, so you can kind of see what they, you know, just see what they're up to or that yeah. stuff really easy without having to go look around and stuff. Yeah, and, hmm. and it keeps track of some of them actually pull in your emails from Gmail and keep like a threaded history of all the email conversations that you've had. Oh, wow. Um, you can keep track. There's usually a functionality called notes or history where when you're having a phone call with somebody, you keep you keep notes in there. Yeah. And then you can refer back to, okay, last year on June 24th, this is what we talked about. Yeah. And like when you, like salespeople do this all the time where when they meet somebody, they'll say, yeah, I met Jack at the networking event. We talked about golf and wine. He's super into golf. So that four months later, when you want to, you know, follow up with Jack, you, you know, you've probably forgotten that he likes golf by that point, but you refer back to your notes and you're like, oh yeah, we talked about golf. That's right. Mm. Yeah. So, so, I mean, it can be good to keep those. People keep that in their head, and then other people need, you know, a system to support them because they just yeah. don't really pay attention to those kind of details. So I can't keep it in their um, head. I'm just gonna no, say. no, no, no. I, I'm not. Yeah, no. It, it's a weakness of mine for sure. I need systems to support, you know, like my time management, calendar, all, you know, everything. Yeah. Mem I'm memory. For, yeah, I'm not like. I don't keep track of that many details. Like I'm very much a big picture guy, and, and it's mm -hmm. very. I just forget things like that. I'm just not. I'm not oh yeah. Like yeah, I understand. So I mean, as a musician, I'm sure you can relate. Um, yeah. Now I'm trying to remember why we brought up CRM and what that. Oh, I think it was what related to prospect pain points or something. <laughs> I think. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah, so CRM, I'm just trying to work backwards. We were talking about prospect pain points and, like, knowing their exact stuff. Yeah, we're talking, oh. we were talking about the ads and, and those things. And yeah, we were so... Saying that I, if I saw this, I would be, you know, more willing than, uh, than yeah. just a less than Yeah, section. and sign... Okay, yeah, yeah, and we were talking about signing up for your list and stuff. That's right. Yeah. So um, what your database ends up becoming is a repository of their needs, wants, and sort of pain points. And you can refer to their contact record sort of history to, to understand that. So, yeah. like, over the series of conversations that, that you and I have had, you've probably mentioned at least a few dozen, like, very specific pain points that you have related to all this stuff. Mm. A specific example of that is that I'm doing a bunch of random things that are a bit of a mishmash, and it feels like it's all scattershot and not effective and not working. Yeah. That's a pretty specific statement. Mm -hmm. And it's a very long statement, and if I echo that back to you, like, let's say, um, because you and I have had this dialogue, and you, re you, you express that exact language to express your pain points that you're thinking of in your head, if I've made a note of that and I've documented that and, I, and, and, and I've listed that as one of your pain points, what I would do is I would take that exact thing and that would be probably my headline on the ad in, in big, bold, I mean medium-sized, yeah. bold, black text, is I would yeah. say, is your marketing a big, random mishmash of scattershot activity that is not producing results? Yeah. Do you feel frustrated and confused and unsure about what to do next. Yeah. That's huge. I mean, that, I, you're speaking directly to me. I mean, that was my dude, issue. I mean, exactly. Um, if, and I was looking if to If you saw to that find, ad, I could almost... I, oh, I would have signed whatever, I mean, immediately. Uh, and that's what, that was something I was trying to find on the Internet, and I couldn't find any answers. Yeah, you didn't um, even know how to look for the answer, let alone... No, no, you try, but it's... Um, it was, I mean, even trying to find answers was frustrating. 
Yeah, um, so Chris, so, so let me ask you a question. So tell me, I, what I want to know is, I want to know the exact words or phrases or search strings that you used to try, okay, so let's assume your pain point was you felt as though you were doing a random mishmash of activity, it was scattershot, and, and it wasn't working. And, and you were frustrated and confused and not sure about what to do next. Okay. If you were to go on to Google or something, like what would you start typing in there? Like what 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 would the terms be? Let's just brain brainstorm. Just it could be anything. Um practical marketing tips. Okay. Um would you search, okay, let, let, let's do some pain point searches instead. Okay. Would you search, like, marketing not working? Yeah, so, yeah, you could do things like that, marketing not working. Um, yeah, just looking for practical marketing tips. Yeah. Um, how do I know if my marketing is working? Yeah. Things like that, question, you know, things that are questions. Um, so... Um, I feel, you just even write in, I feel lost in marketing, you know, I mean, you come up with something. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now I, I find that, like, Google searches a lot of times, but the things people put in, uh, just regular people um, are more conversational. Like, they put in things like that. They'll like, my marketing isn't working. Like, they'll, they'll put it in a, a sentence form or in a question form or things like that. Yeah, I, I, t I totally agree. A question... And I think what you just echoed is you you echoed a pain point, hmm. and, and, and it was a pain point that led to a search. Yeah. And the search was a phrase that echoed the pain point. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't sort of – so we can apply this sort of pain-based approach or increased pleasure. So increased pleasure would be, you know, practical marketing tips to grow your business, but I would wager that the, the other side of the coin, the pain-based search, is probably a little more motivating and powerful. Yeah. So practical marketing tips, well, that's great, but I think that that's something that you would mention second. I, I would lead with a more pain-based approach where, um, you know, like I said before, do you feel as though your marketing is a random mishmash of activity that's scattershot and not effective? Are you confused? So the, the the search for that would be, like you said, marketing, you know, marketing not working. Yeah, or frustrated with marketing or yeah, something along those lines. Yeah, so like actually echoing the pain point. Now, I wonder how we can apply this to you. So the trouble is that you're in a um, for search marketing, you're you sort of have these geographic qualifiers. Yeah, where but, in terms, were, but in terms of teaching um, over Skype and Google Hangouts and things like that, I don't. I mean, that's one of my hopes. Yeah, um, is to, to do more online teaching uh, yeah. because my time for teaching is generally limited to afternoon to early evening. I mean, that's when people have it. But if I can find people in other countries or other time zones, that yep. opens up a whole different possibility, which hey, is Chris. exciting. We're going to take all this to the next level right here, right now. Your goal as the business owner is to, is to teach more on Skype. Yeah. How can we take everything we've learned so far, let's riff on the prospect's pain points and how you can alleviate those pain points, and it just so happens that you're using Skype to alleviate those pain points. Here's an example. Yeah. Um... If you're the only guy on earth that, and, and I'm just using this based on my own bias and philosophy, if you're the only guy on earth that's all about a simple and minimal philosophy of playing, and just, just follow, give me a second, I'm writing this down. Okay. And you pair this simple and minimal philosophy with a research-based method for playing and practicing that reduces the amount of practice time you have to do down into whatever, you know, three minutes a day, and, and I mean, that's, that's just arbitrary. Yeah. How might you echo these things in ways that are going to reach people who might purchase this from you over Skype, you know? Oh, so in I'll other see. words, who, okay, so what this means is who are your ideal students that might, um, 
that might be interested in this type of thing. And, and like, because I think Skype, I think virtual teaching is a tricky one because, yes, of course you want to teach more, like, to individuals and groups. That's your customer's goal. So yeah. to make that work, you've got to figure out their pain points and how you can echo these things to them in a way that persuades them to want to purchase Skype lessons or, you know, okay. Hangout lessons from you. So this is a, this is a tricky one. Um, So, the, the, first of all, who's the most likely to purchase these? I'm, I, I'm guessing it's... Would it be well, Something beginners? like this, for people that would see it, it would probably mostly be... It would have to mostly be either parents or grown-ups. Or, okay. you know, adults, because, I mean, kids... That might be harder. Yeah. Um, yeah. But if I can push the... You know, even pushing the... Hey, you know, you don't you don't even have to leave your house. You don't have to worry about Johnny's soccer game and this and that and the other. We can schedule it for a time that works. Ah, and, now we're getting um, somewhere. You know what I mean? It's just trying to save save mom um, a little more running around. Um, I found that most of the students, man, I mean, especially if they have more than more than one kid, they are just soccer game, this this practice, this tutoring. Da 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 da. I mean, they're they're running around like. Uh, with insane schedules, and any time that I think even that I can make it, hey, I come to you, or hey, we can meet together, and you don't even have to leave your house, uh, the convenience factor yep. of that I think is very strong. This is very valuable. We're totally getting somewhere here. So what you just said to me is, uh, are you running around from picking up the kids after school to soccer practice, to tutoring lessons. Um, I'm just thinking here. Uh, hmm. I'm just thinking. You name how, it. They got, yeah, yeah. So, 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 like, they in, got this. They you know, got that. They it, got that. You know, and all those things are you come to us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so, so the the, the pain point is that they're too busy already, but they, uh, but they they want lessons, and so you can offer them increased convenience. You know. Yeah. Now, that only matters if they value the increased convenience enough to sort of not do the lessons in person, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But if it's just little Johnny doing scales the whole lesson, then, do, you know, does it really need to be in person? Like, you know, are, are you going to be... Uh, um, I, I guess in person you can kind of reposition their fingers and stuff, but... Yeah, I don't know. Like, how much of your lessons are devoted to just running them through drills and practice, basically? Not too, too much, because that's what they should be doing anyways. I try and yeah. teach that that's what you do during your homework. We make okay. sure things are working and, and stuff like that, but aside from that, it's um, you do the stuff on your own time. You know, we'll do a little bit of it if we're beginning a new kind of technique so that they can get used to it and I can make sure they're getting it. But yeah. aside from that, I mean, I, I stress... Yeah, we don't want to sit and do this all day because yeah. you already know how to do it. You now sit and practice. Now do it for this much a day when you practice. Yeah, um, okay. Yeah, I try to be very interactive. I think that um, online lessons could be really cool. You know, and same thing. I mean, I'd have a guitar right here or I'd have, you know, whatever. Piano, i got a piano right here. Yeah. got yeah. drums right there. You know, it's um, it seems very doable. A lot of it's that's the... That's the difference in the teaching style, I think, and trying to really teach versus, okay, go do this a bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go grab a drink and I'll, I'll be back in a while. Okay, so I think it's yeah, pretty. We're talking about. Yeah, I think it's pretty clear that you feel as though the 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 virtual or online training makes sense, and that that you think that, um, you think it makes sense, and you think it's totally doable for the customer. But it's just this marketing piece in the middle where how do you persuade people to buy these lessons from you? Yeah, yeah, but I think one of the things is convenience, and then it's trying to you just find another another few factors that would okay come alongside um, that and make it more enticing. Also, how do we echo convenience, Chris, in a way that alludes to their pain points? So, how do you express what is the opposite of of, of like hmm? You're you're increasing convenience because you're addressing their pain point around. They're basically you know, are you run off your feet? 
Or you, yeah. you know, do you, do you, do you pick up your kid from daycare and then take them to the tutorial and go to the grocery store and then, you know, are, are things just crazy? Yeah. Do you wish you had more time for your kid to blah, blah, blah? Yeah. And time for yourself, I mean. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's for the kid and the parent. Um, and then well, yeah. talk about some of the benefits of guitar, some of the things that we've been talking about before, the... Um, uh, better chance at success in life, you know, all the, the yep. benefits that are the customer-focused benefits yep. of, you know, what playing an instrument is, and then yep. um, try yeah, to yeah, yeah. some of those in as well. Yeah. You can get into those later. I would, I would focus on prospect pain points um, initially, okay. specifically in your headline, and don't, don't be afraid to um, have a headline that consists of, like, even three separate lines and three separate questions in bold text, that works fine. Okay. The reason it works fine is because you're echoing the things that they're thinking about in their head. And as soon as you do that, as long as you have an ad that's like acceptable in its design, there's so much power in those first three lines, man. Yeah. That's everything. If you hook them in with that, you've got them. And, and I think a lot of business owners, they're so skeptical about advertising and marketing and all this stuff I think the reason they're skeptical is because they don't really know how it works. And and the reality is that if you understand your prospect's pain points well enough to echo them with precise language in the headline, well, they're going to read your ad. And, and if they read your ad, they're much more likely to respond. So, you know... Uh, you know, when everybody talks about these little micro nano optimizations online, such as, you know, should my button be yellow or should it be red? Well, who who cares? Yeah. If they haven't read the headline, they're not making it to the button anyway. So by optimizing the button, you're wasting your time. Mm. You know? So this is really important here, and I, I, I realize we're, we're running out of steam and we're probably going over time, but this is like the most critical aspect of today's conversation. Yeah. This idea of the three P's, Chris, prospect pain points, you, it applies at all levels, and you can think about it at all levels. So, um, so when you're thinking about the, um, you know, selling virtual lessons to increase convenience for, on, for, for moms who are run off their feet, yeah. all you got to do is come back to her prospect pain points, and and you know what they are, you know. Um, are you run off your feet because, you know, blah, blah, blah. We've already talked yeah, about that. Yeah, but you, but just, you still want the best for your kid. You still... Yes, yes, thank you. Yeah. So yeah. echo those. Echo a bunch of them in, 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 at the top of the ad. And I don't care if you do it in, in, in a one-line headline or a three separate lines yeah. that are three questions and then have a little sub-headline and then, like... It, it, the reality is it almost doesn't matter how you structure your ad if you're getting at the right pain points in, in right. an order that, that makes sense. Yeah. So, like, dude, we're literally writing the ad right now. Like, you could literally yeah. type this. And yeah. I would actually recommend that you do somehow <laughs> collect time this information. Right <laughs> okay, good. good. <laughs> so this will be a great ad for, for moms like that. Now, um, I'll just kind of maybe keep talking as you're uh, – are you done typing or do you yes. just uh, – okay. I'm done typing for now. Fantastic. Okay. So as long as you have enough information to – Yeah, oh, I definitely have enough to go up. Great. So – what I love about this idea of prospect pain points is, um, and this takes it to the next level, whenever you think of any kind of a benefit or a feature of, of what you're offering, you know, link it back to the prospect pain point. So, so if, you know, when you're thinking about, you know, this woman, you know, she's, she's thinking in her head like, you know, God, I'm running off my feet. I, I you know, I, I picked the kid up from school and then, you know, take them to the, the, the tutor and then groceries, and, and it's just I'm run off my feet and I'm overwhelmed. Yeah. So that's what she's thinking. So if, if, you, if you echo that in your, in your headline, yeah. then what you do is you say, I've created a, I mean, don't use this exact text, but what you're doing is you're, 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 you're saying, I've, cr I've got a solution for you. And I've got yeah. a solution to the exact three things that are listed up, these exact three questions. And the solution is, so let's just, I, I just need to go through the wording again to sort of get at the right wording for the solution. Um, are you run off your feet from picking up your kid at school to taking them to the, tut to the tutor, to the grocery store? Do you feel overwhelmed and, and run off your feet, question mark? 
Yeah. Do you feel... Uh, actually, you came up with this. You, you said um, something like, do you still want... Uh, like, what was it that you said? You, um, still want the best getting... you still want the best for your kids. You know, you're so yeah. tired and overwhelmed in this, but you, you, you don't want that to affect your, your kids. That's great copy. Fantastic. So now we've... We've echoed the pain point, and we've sort of echoed even more pain points where they, they, they really want the best for their kid, but they're a bit overwhelmed. Yeah. Okay, now we've set them up. Now they're expecting something. Okay. So now we can go into... I'm the only music teacher in the Orange County area offering virtual lessons. And... and you know, that might be disposable wording, but... Yeah. Or, here's a better way to say it. Book a 30-minute virtual music lesson. Okay. Just, just come, come right out and make the offer right there. Book a 30-minute virtual lesson... Okay. ...conducted over Skype or Google Hangouts. Okay. So that you can, uh, let's think about it, or, or maybe like you could say to save you the hour that you would spend driving, or what do you think? Yeah, just to save, to, to um, be able to give your kid what you want and to be able to take a break for a second, you know, I mean, it's just to have take, a little okay, more time to, for yourself, you know. Perfect. So, so. So you can take a break. So you can take a break. Yeah. Have have some time for yourself. And still have the best. And still. And still. Yeah. Okay. Yes, this is wicked copy. Yeah. Okay, and we've already said book a thirty-minute virtual lesson today, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's come back to prospect pain points, the three P's. Let's think about it. So we've, we've made we've their, their, I guess you could say, three pain points in the headline. Um, and, and, okay, so they're, they're sort of not sure. Um, they're, they're overwhelmed to run off their feet, and then we've said, but you still want your best for your kids. So we've, we've planted these sort of seeds in their head, and then we've, we've, we've acknowledged that we understand them. So we've echoed empathy and compassion. Um, and we've got them now. We've got their attention. So then we move into, hey, you know, we've got some. We we can help you. We've got the solution yeah. to this exact set of pain points that you listed. And it's not just any old solution. It's like the exact solution according to these. So, you know, book a thirty-minute virtual lesson today, so that, and, and like it's all linked, dude. Like, yeah. you know. You know, don't just book a 30-minute lesson. You know, give me the reasons why. Okay, yeah, well, yeah. here's the reasons. So that you can take a little more time for yourself, take a break, relax, you know, indulge in that home spa or, I don't know, whatever. Like, you can you can riff with that a bit. But um, so you can come up with a few benefits there that are, that are the yeah. so that. Um, and then if they're not convinced at that point, I think it might, hmm, well, I mean, there's a number of ways you could go after that. Actually, what I would do is I would list some testimonials after this. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but not just any old testimonials. So let's apply what we're learning. What kind of testimonials would you would you have here? Um, testimonials that support these, you know what I mean, that support what, uh, um, about how it was, this happened for me. It's proof, you know, it's uh, like we talked about, it's, it's proof. Um, where someone's saying exactly, yeah. someone's echoing what you're saying and saying, yeah, what he's saying is correct. That's what happened for me. Let's basically. get super. Su yes, you're absolutely right. Um, let's get more specific. The way that you can link these testimonials here to the pain points above is to specifically say, not only was I able to. You know, have more time for myself, take a break, and 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 sort of you know give Johnny the you know be the best parent I can be by giving Johnny the lessons he wanted. You know, 
specifically well, these benefits, speaking, you, benefits, you know, X, 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 this has happened yeah, to him. Yeah, you go that way. Yeah, yeah, I didn't quite say this. I didn't, I didn't quite say this clearly enough. What I meant was, you know, instead of spending an hour driving to music practice, I've now got an hour for myself on Wednesdays between 5 and 6 p.m. You wouldn't believe how nice it is to have this time for myself. You know, like just try and link it somehow to the pain points. Okay. And, and um, you know, there's a bunch of ways you can do it. And you, you, you mentioned yeah, yeah. some ways, and I've mentioned some ways, but just the idea is that the testimonials are linked directly to the prospect pain points. Yeah. That's the main idea there. Um, and if they're still not convinced after all of this, very uh, systematically designed copy. Let's let's make another offer. You know, okay. So you read the testimonial. So let's say they're convinced at this point. Let's make another offer. You know, and, and I don't know if we want to switch the wording up or keep it the same. But you know, book a thirty-minute virtual lesson today, so that you know. <clears throat> so you could you could put that there. Yeah. Um, or not. Again, these are like you can think of these ads, Chris, as they're sort of modular, where you can sort of move things around and try different things out. And uh -huh. um, I'm sure you'll get a better idea of what works. But over, I mean, these ads, Chris, they're just getting better and better. And I can tell that you're you're getting this. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to think it all through and uh, yeah, um, and having these as kind of like starting points to to kind of refine. I think we could come up with some cool stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I, I think we've adequately covered sort of um, how to repeatedly echo the prospect pain points and to focus on the prospect pain points and to realize that whenever we get into trouble in marketing, all we got to do is come back to the three P's: prospect pain points. Yeah, yeah. You, just, you, you cannot go wrong by doing that. And like, man, if we I mean, you've already seen for yourself out there in the world that there's so many bad ads up there on the bulletin board, despite the fact that they should be, you know, given credit for putting them putting them up there. But it's really yeah. quite ineffective for for yeah. the amount of time and effort that they probably put put in putting all these things up. Yeah. Let me give you let me give you another example here, Chris. And and I <laughs> I wrote a blog post about it and it got deleted because my computer got turned off. But you know how most gig post how most gig posters for bands are very band focused. Yeah. What if we applied this prospect pain points thinking? And I'm not I'm not suggesting you do this personally. I'm just you know I'm working on the thinking here. If you were to design a gig poster for a band that was focused on the prospect pain points of the people walking by on the street, what might those prospect pain points be? Oh, that's a good question. I am off the top of my head. I'm not sure. What was your okay. What was your thought behind it? Yeah. So I I think the biggest benefit of like it what it's really about is a a great night out, and b a ba a great date night out, and c a quick date idea. Okay. So yeah. those were the, those yeah. were the first things I thought of. So what I would say is something like is you know need a quick date idea. You know. How about surprising her with two tickets to the Black Roses show on Friday, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Now, that might be totally lame and just not, you know, vibing with the image of the band, but I'll tell you, man, you know, I hear so many musicians and bands complaining that they don't get enough people out to their shows. Well, part of the reason I think is because they're, you know, everything yeah, they do is so... <laughs> No, no, I'm not. I'm not suggesting you. I'm just no, suggesting no, 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 not that. I'm saying the pro them. They're why are they not getting it? It's because they're saying me, 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 me. Yeah, it's it's so focused on them. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. just they're not echoing what like, you know, the prospect is seeing twenty gig posters and they're all bl they're all blurring into the same tickets. Twenty five bucks to get a fucking album, you know, cover on the yeah. on the on the poster and stuff, and it's, they all blur into one big mishmash, right? Yeah. Because it's all about them. It's not about the prospect. It's not about the customer. And I think if more bands actually thought like marketers, they might realize that a band is a business just like any other, really. And you're in the business of giving your fans and your audience what they want. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and the way I know that you know this is because, you know, 
you guys with your band Glider, you're saying, hey, we're really into this sound that, um, and I don't know what your influences are. I just interpret the, interpreted them as being, you know, Kings of Leon meets Veruca Salt in a unique, you know, blend. Um, that's your passion and that's what you're doing. But, you know, if you want people to come to your shows, you're really in the business of giving them a great date night out and a quick, easy date idea. Yeah. Because when they're walking by, that is the prospect's pain point. Shit. I don't have a date idea this week. Jeez, you know, she's probably wondering, you know, um, what am I going to come up with? Jeez, I want to look like I'm a man with the plan and that I got my stuff together. Jeez, I need something quick. Bam. You see that poster? Yeah. You know, need a, need a quick date idea. How about two quick, you know, two tickets to the Black Roses show on this date? Here's the plan. Show up at 8, but come a little early so you can get prime viewing location. Yeah. You know, because this puppy's going to be sold out. It's in a small room. You know our shows sell out. Get there early, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So it's sort of like you're hitting them on a couple levels. So, you know, need the quick date night. Here's the solution for your quick date night. You know, be the man with the plan. You know, we'll give you, you know, we'll literally say, here's the plan. You mm. know, show up at 8 for these reasons. And it's like this very logical progression that's focused entirely on the prospect's pain points. Mm. So, again, I'm not necessarily recommending recommending you use that for your own band because it could be totally lame to, to be putting that on but your poster, but... You know, it's all worth thinking about, and the more examples, kind of the more you can kind of get what's going on, and you can then take that kind of format and apply it to what you want to do with it. Well, Chris, and I'm, I'm, I'm confident that with the skills and knowledge that you're, that you're acquiring here to, you know, spot bad ads and to sort of really, really think about what those prospect pain points are, I'm actually confident that you could write an ad for any industry, any product, mm. using this process. Yeah, no, it's very, very powerful. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 and you don't need to. I'm just trying to illustrate the, the critical importance in marketing of just prospect pain points. And again, if, if I might make this full circle and summarize what we talked about in the beginning, which was the four P's of marketing, product, places, price, promotion, mm -hmm. the four P's of marketing are totally self-centered on the business owner and, and, and his or her products. Yeah. And only through the, chance, through the serendipitous chance that those products happen to be designed with pain points in mind would all that work. I think a much easier approach is come back to the prospect pain points and echo those right at the top of any type of marketing document you create, whether it's your ads, your web pages, you know, anything. Yeah. And quite frankly, I, I can, I mean, in an abstract sense, you can think of any conversation that you have as a marketing document as well. Um, or, or the, in, the inverse of that as well. But so for instance, you know, if you were talking to a mom who you knew was run off her feet and, and you could say, you know, I got all this feedback actually from, from a bunch of um, parents of my students, and they were just saying that, you know, they're just totally run off their feet, and they go straight from work to pick up their kid, and then they got to go get groceries, and they got to pick up the other kid from the tutor, and they just, they don't have any time for themselves anymore. So, yeah. um, actually, one of my, you know, one of these parents, if, if I'd be willing to do virtual lessons so that she, you know, it would save her the 60-minute the, the round trip of driving both ways, and she could, you know, so, so, her kid could get the lesson that he wanted and so that she could just stay home and enjoy a bit of time for herself. Yeah. So it's almost like a talking ad almost yeah. where you're, yeah. you're, you're like very calculated about what information you're presenting and in what order. Mm. Now I just made that up and, 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 and I mean, you, <laughs> you, you may never actually hear that from people, but it sounded credible. Yeah. I hope. <laughs> yeah, it did. Anyway, I, I think I can tell you're totally getting this, man, and that. No, it's good. It's yeah. It's. You're every what? Time what? My brain gets so full. Oh, dude. Every time we do these, I think of five other ones that I would want to do that each deserve their own hour. <laughs> oh, jeez. But Chris, it's so true, though. I mean, there's so much to there's. Yeah. It's a it's a big deep hole. Yeah. <laughs> here, here's the beauty of it. What we're really doing here is we are developing your building blocks or pieces for success. Yeah. Consisting of, you know, your systems, your documents, and then combining that with your own knowledge, your own skills. That's a great formula. Yeah, very much. So, yeah. Anyway, we've uh, we've made a lot of progress here. Um, yeah. 
I, I'm not even going to dare to look at the clock yet. Because, <laughs> you know, I, I don't care about the clock, Chris. What I care about is value. Yeah. I care that you're learning this, that you're applying it in real time. Um, I care that you're adding, the, you know, that you're going to be practicing these skills in your own marketing practice. Uh, yeah. And, you know, guess what? By teaching this, I'm learning a ton. I'm practicing. Mm -hmm. I'm applying. Um because you know the reality, the reality is the the more time we spend each day doing this stuff, we're just going to get better and better. That's true. Our ads are going to get more focused. Our productivity is going to get more focused. You know, all of the above. Very much. Anyway, man, I feel like I've been blabbing a ton, which is definitely true. Um, before we wrap up here, we we summarized how um, you know at the beginning we mentioned the four P's of marketing that you hear about in marketing 101: product, places price promotion is very sort of focused on the business, the business owner, their products, their goals. But what we want to do is focus instead on the three P's, which are the prospects pain points. And we want to okay. constantly echo those prospect pain points. And the funny thing that happens when you echo prospect pain points throughout your communications in a very methodical and logical way is the, the benefits you need to offer become obvious, I think. Yeah. Makes sense. Like if if, if you're saying, hey, this woman's run, this woman is run off her feet. She has no time to herself. Well, guess what? Come up with the solution that's going to give her that time for herself, while enabling her to to, to be the best parent she can be. Yeah. Well, yeah. what? And then and then what you do is you, you're building a logical case. And so the logical next thing is book a 30 minute virtual lesson so that you can achieve all these things. And here's the proof from these five people that have gotten the results. And like. That's like fish in a barrel stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but so that's the summary here. Is is um, I, and I want to repeat this actually, just for your own benefit and mine and anybody that watches this video. Come back to the three P's whenever you're in trouble in marketing and echo them constantly throughout your communications, and it's going to guide you to the types of products and services and solutions that you need to offer. And I think it will even guide your branding. Mm. Um, <laughs> you know, you could call your you, you know. Um, Something like, you know, more time for you, guitar lessons. And I, I'm not, yeah. that's a ter terrible name, actually. I'm not suggesting you use that, and I would actually ask that you don't. <laughs> um, but what I'm getting at is, again, by focusing on the prospect pain points, you've guided what your brand name might need to be. Yeah. It's like at the core of it. So, um, <laughs> And I don't have any brain power left to riff on what the brand names would be for your school. <laughs> no, I just, I really don't. I mean, you know, all this makes sense. It's just kind of take these principles now and um, explore them, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's awesome, man. And so it yeah. doesn't sound to me like, like you have any questions. Um, no, right now, in no, terms of, totally good. Okay, great. So w please make sure you, you've saved, like, your strategies, tactics, yes. and your goals file on your computer. And, okay, and everything's saved great yeah. so that we, we, we make sure that's all good. Okay, um... I'm just trying to think about, so we've completed the daily action planner, we've completed strategies, tactics, goals, and I'm definitely not going to summarize all that. Um, yeah, and then we did the we've also talked about needs matrix. That's right, yeah. We, yeah. we did net nested value hierarchy, and I've got to probably simplify those names. Yeah. But that was just linking down yeah. the, the highest levels of value through, you know, realizing that, you know, a parent's goal isn't just taking Johnny to music lessons, it's, you know, to be the best parent they can be so that they can achieve the relationship and parenting success they want in life. It's yeah. just like working down through that hierarchy, nested hierarchy, that's why I call it nested. Oh, um, and, I mean, we've talked about a tons of tons of concepts along the way, and, and mm -hmm. um, this, this most recent one of, you know, prospect pain points, I think is actually really crucial. Yes. Are there any other, I'm trying to remember if there's any other documents we've created, are there? No, no, I just have the customer needs matrix, the daily action planner, the nested value hierarchy, awesome. um, and then just uh, yeah. and then the notes here today um, from the goal strategies, tactics, yeah. and then the, the triple P there at the end that we've been talking about. Awesome. Okay, so I'm very convinced that, you're, you, that you definitely understand this prospect pain points idea. Could you kindly very quickly read out just your, your goals, strategies, and tactics so that it gets out there into the universe. Okay, the goals, uh, for goals I have uh, by June uh, to have five more lessons, uh, bringing the total to 25. Um, I want to read five studies um, on uh, related to uh, case studies 
uh, related to music by May 1st. Um, and then uh, I haven't put a date, but I said by X. Um, think of X-related um, interests different students have, and you can break into different customer categories. Uh, for strategies, I have a long-term, big-picture objectives. Uh, we were looked at be the most credible, liked, trusted, etc. We talked about the power of music concept, um, and we talked about how its uh, value is increased when it's linked to pain or, or when it's linked to the pain. Um, uh, let's see. Um, one thing I noted here was increase the amount of people that know, like, and trust you. And that was based on the duct tape marketing. Um, we talked about the research-based system, that terminology, or the science of music. And then we talked about related interests a little bit, like a targeting criteria. And that was things like golf, wine, travel. For tactics, that's our low-level implementation. And we looked at uh, listing our channels, and our tools and platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Google, telephone, you know, uh, and then telephone polls, things like that, that had a different term to it. Uh, telephone poll ads, bulletin boards, yeah. Yeah, that was still you know, part of the, the channels. Yeah. Um, and we talked about how the tactics link to the strategies um, and how the strategies are a little more behind the curtain, uh, but they link together. Um, and then we talked about... Um, uh, horizontal linkages. Yes. Uh, horizontal, yes. Um, that's what I have for tactics. And then, and then I just have some different little notes about some of the things we talked about. Uh, the yellow tail wine, Cirque du Soleil, yeah. uh, practice versus a practice. Uh, we touched on that Blue Ocean Strategy uh, book. Um, and, then we, and then we looked at the, the, the three Ps, or the, the triple P. Um, and we kind of came up with a little bit of an ad for that. Um, yeah, and then we also uh, finally have the reverse reverse painting by numbers, which is kind of fun. <laughs> and I think some you should explore a little more because it's an interesting take on it. Uh, but yeah, and then yeah, just kind of closed off with the uh, uh, the prospects pain points, three P's, uh, which yeah. seems very powerful. Yeah, so a lot yeah. of stuff today covered quite a bit. Of yeah, so I, um, the. What we were talking about with the horizontal linkages, um, the vertical linkages uh, were the fact that that's right, yeah. Yep. So the, the the vertical linkages were the fact that your tactics kind of link up to your strategies and your goals, and it, and and there's a lot of overlap, and you can think of it as all these circles that are all overlapping to create one big circle of circles. Yeah. And then lower down, you're at the tactics level, your tools, your platforms, your channels, all the different places you're showing up and stuff. Yeah. Um. There's clarity in the daily action planner over horizontally in terms of how often you're doing these tactics. Yes, and that's you. And, and organized by the day of the month so that your to-do list is mostly created for you already. And you, yeah. um, I guess the closing point here is to, um, by, by collaborating with other people and, and, and expressing um, all the things that are in your head around this stuff and, and shedding light on it and just getting it out of you and by getting um, the rest of the stuff that's in your head out into systems and different things like that, then you kind of clear your head for yeah. maximum creativity. Yeah, definitely. Because you're not spending all your time going, what, what should I be doing and am I doing the right thing or not worrying. Yeah. Um, and so that, yeah. I think, is the most powerful point that we could close with. So, Chris, thank yeah. you so much for your time today, man. I think this is a breakthrough. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, definitely. It's been, it's been quite a day. Both for you and for me, actually. I've, I've really, you know, I, I was up till 3 in the morning watching a video on this stuff last mm. night, so I feel like I've really solidified my own learning. So thank you so mm. much. And we will be in touch uh, regarding yes, the, next, the next Hangout. I mean, unfortunately, with the things that you've listed that you've learned in this Hangout, I can think of 20 or 30 different Hangouts that would each <laughs> easily... So who knows? Maybe it'll turn into a twenty to thirty part video course or something. But um, so I'll stop the uh, I'll stop the hangout here here, Chris, and uh, okay. we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so Thanks. much. Thanks, Dan.